saying that if really we are what this is to be, that's what it means to be a son of God. That it's not just about your life, but it's about the life around you. Listen to me, we are lights in the dark world. I'm probably going to teach this, so let me mention this. Light, I'm writing a book. If you copy it, my God will fight for me. Amen. <laughs> light is an acronym. L is love. We are tired, the world is tired of Christians that don't love people. If you don't know, we know now. And it says, by this shall you know your disciples how, when you love one another. I'm talking about love in the workplace. Even when the person you want is wrong, you correct in love. Somebody told me, he said, one of the most wicked persons in the office is a deacon in this church. And I was like, and you, you go to the office, you go to the deacon, I come in. Sorry, I hope you're to that That is, God is ashamed. I'm telling you, love, number one, L, I, innovation and insights. Listen to me, you can't be working in an organization and you're not bringing solutions there. You have to do that. That is what, that's, listen, the, oh, I want to be like Joseph, I want to be like Daniel. What of them brought solutions? What are you bringing? Oh, I believe my job is not enough. What is the dream that the Pharaoh, your company has that you need to interpret and bring a solution to? That's what we're talking about. That's I, G, godliness. Right now, I think there's a lot of surveys about how people, in fact, there's a survey in the UK now that a lot of people don't believe it's the number that believe in heaven has dropped. Yes, these are statistics. And the reason why, let me tell you why, because there are no proofs. That's why we have more sound than results. And people are tired of that. Even God is tired of that. So godliness, what it means to be godly in a very ungodly world. Are we together? What is age? Age is healing. The number one place we have an opportunity to reach people is at work. The marketplace, where we exchange, where we do business. We want a business. People come to you. You are doing makeup. It's when you are doing makeup, you can tell, you know, you have beautiful eyes. Are my eyes beautiful? My mother told me I have big, ugly eyes. And she's 35 and she's still suffering from it today. That is healing you can bring there. What about tea? Truth. Today, we're not sure whether it's Adam and Eve and others. Are we together? Do you get my point? Look, and this, this is me. They are challenging truth. Now, listen to me. You cannot bring truth. You will bring yourself against the truth. But we have to start from the truth in a way that is not, we're not trying to fight. Someone came to me the other day and said, can you, can you recruit somebody that is in LGBTQ? I said, I don't need their sexuality to get the job done. Can you do the job? Do it. I just don't do it in my office. I was saying that. It's not fundamentally wrong. Yeah, but you can do it. I can do my job. And I'm telling you, it's in that place that you have the opportunity to influence people. By the way, that movement grew a lot because I believe by the wrong reaction of people to them. That's how it grew. That's how it grew. I'm not asking us clearly to love those things, but we love the people. I love you. God bless you. Amen. But you know where I stand. Look at my What do you think? You knew what I was thinking before you came to ask what I think. But we have this one against you. Respond to those people. I don't need your sexuality to do your. And by the way, it's like, you know, you have a, you know, when people say, I am this, I identify as this sexuality, I tell people that, look, it's like seeing a rage over, am I right? You know, somebody, there's somebody here that works from there, all right? And, and see the whole car and say that, wow, it's just a tire. The whole car is a tire. You cannot define the whole car by one dimension of it. Sexuality is just one. What about your life? What about your impact? What about family? What about those are the other things? Value. You tell me that you are this, you are that. What value are you adding on that? Let's know. So we need to have higher conversations beyond no, this. Romans 1 says, Roma, and we need to understand scripture so we can have good conversations with people. Amen. T is truth and S is salvation. Listen to me. If, you, if they see love, they bring in, they bring inside the innovation, godliness, healing, truth, you will take your salvation. Today, that time we go, if you die today, where are you going? Heaven or hell? You know what they tell you? So this is your generation. You say, die hell, what's going on? Biggie Smalls is there. Tupac is there. We will rock the place. That's what they'll be telling you. Throw us. We are not afraid of it. Like because what we are preaching was not salvation. What's in the gospel? Telling you about heaven or hell. It's not the gospel. We need to understand the kingdom. And that's why we're having a meeting like this. And many more. And we're going to talk about all of them today. Listen to me. God is activating people to teach about the kingdom of God. When a church is operating and doesn't teach kingdom, you have problems. Don't let me go there today. Continue. I think we can end this session. <laughs> <laughs> um,
so many uh, nuggets in there before you said. And I just, again, want to encourage every single one of us, don't take the different bits for granted. We don't know how, you know, like he's, God has sent him here to activate us today um, for this season. But I think you need to be coming every year. So, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, but God bless you. I, I'm tempted to continue my visit. You know, start to wind down the session. Sure. Uh, but we can ask more questions. Don't worry. Write your questions down in case you have to ask him. Uh, final question in this segment. That's the question for me. Um, I. Sorry, I know this one even cold. Texas is warm, so it's it's a bit of a hell. Don't worry. I'm going back home. <laughs> That's why I actually don't come in the cold to the UK. You have this way. This, I bought it. I want to put it. <laughs> so, final question for me. Um, this is a personal question. So, if you like, come and collect the mic. I'm kidding. Um, costs, finances. So, you hear from God. You, you know, realize, okay, this is on my way. So, I'm going to Lagos anyway, and so on. But then you want to the ball. You know, <coughs> get stuff covered. Yeah, sorry. Can we please get one time for us? Sorry. Thank you. I like the way you even crafted the question because I believe that part of what I also am called to teach is um, how to practically trust God. How many people have projects that only God can do? It's anybody? Aha. Uh -huh. So <clears throat> when I got this call to do this, I mean, I looked at my account and I was like, no, we're not doing this. How are we together? No, we're not doing this. But I had to learn all over again, you know, in very practical ways, what it means to be my faith. I think this meeting, I'm not spending money plus minus my flight to will spend well over a thousand five hundred pounds, you know, and all that. But how has it happened? I had to learn a bit about the system that works. So you can call this a ministry for lack of a better word. And this is not a church, it's just something that ministers. That serves others all together. And um, Jesus, you know, having church troubles. Good. So, how did Jesus finance what he was doing? 12 men <laughs> tried to, you understand, out in my house, and I know I'm going through that. All right. So, you might imagine 12 men. How was he able to finance it? So, if you look at them three, and the Bible puts it there that there were men, three women, particularly, that spoke about that, and many others who ministered of their substance to him. So one thing I found out is this, that the way that God, God is not a lot of confusion. Um, a lot of people were not called to start a church, but they did start the church just to have money to do the work. But the problem is that church will take your time. So they're not doing the church and they're not doing the work that they're meant to do. So there are people that are called, you know, within the fivefold that will do church. And there are people that I call itinerant ministers that travel. By the way, some of you are here today and you have no idea. We are going to get to that in a minute, all right? Yeah, how many of you have seen yourself Speaking and going around the world, raise, raise your hand up. Anybody? And you say, I, I know. Uh, that's what it means. This is the problem. When you start, God will get to your account and then you start. Okay? So, how do you do that? The way that it works is um, what you call a partnership system. That's what Jesus did. And so, we have partners. And so, what I did was that when I was clear about the vision, I did a vision sharing meeting. I talked about it to a couple of people and I told them and I said, you know what? And I remember I struggled. You know, I struggled. I don't want to look at me like I'm begging. Do you know who I am? I'm Jimmy Tilly. Do you understand? Like me. I don't want to feel like I'm begging. The Holy Spirit said to me, said, Jimmy, what's the difference between asking and begging? And I was like, hmm. And he said, you know, it should be a picture. And it should, I saw my son. My son knows how to ask. We just said, I don't know. Dad, going shopping. As if you put money in my pocket. Am I right? Look at Ah, please, bring something. That's what you Ah. Yeah, so it was very physical, you know, that cover, please bring it to the front, oh, thank you. All right? My son walked in the room and said, Daddy, why don't you go shopping? In fact, you made me buy my new jersey, you get this one already. I cannot cut my matches out. So that's my son. He doesn't beg me. He doesn't enter my room. Dear Father, I'd like to appease you and beg you as you go to Manchester with your mother I saw. No, he doesn't say that. The reason why he's able to do that is because he has a premise. The second reason why 
you can ask is there's a promise. So, for example, if Yudini tells me, oh, that she's going to take my phone lunch, I said, yes, when are we going? Because she promised me. I was going to. And so God said to me, sir, look, once there's a premise or a promise, then you can ask me. So I started to share with people that I've been a blessing to. Guys, I'm going around the world, to my point, and I'm being open about it, you know, and um, as God is, you know, pressure. I went together, and then God gave me some information also about how some organization is going to give towards it and have visibility when there's concern. And I really realized that we need to teach that a bit more because people are used to just maybe giving the church, and you should be in your church. Listen to me. Your church is a training center that needs to train you. And not always say, no, shut down all the churches. You will not, you don't know what you said. Unless it's because you have no idea. I know that they're not perfect. I know that there are problems. Are we together? Even if you are the pastor, there will be problems. So I'll say, amen. And just so you know, I'm just letting you know. Are we together? But, <laughs> just so, but I'm not, you know, I'm advocating for imperfection. I'm just saying that if God is comfortable enough to work with us, then it's okay. We'll keep moving. Are we together? But for ministry, things like this. So people give towards it. So I share the vision. Some people in this room give towards this meeting. At some point in the meeting, I will ask you to give towards other meetings. So that as it becomes, as you provide those resources, it makes it easier for me to obey God. You get my point? I didn't come here with night boss. I hope you know. I flew here. It's a couple of thousands of dollars and all those kind of things. And sometimes I have to take my resources and put it inside. So I'm taking my time, taking my resources. That's what makes it burdensome, and people now decide not to be God. I'm saying that not for my benefit today. Some of you, and listen to me, there's a partnership that is in the kingdom. The Bible did not say, He sent one, He we sent them out two by two. What does that mean is that whenever God sent people, somebody, He sends others with them. And what I found out that it works, the way it works is that when you do it for others, they will do it for you too. I'm telling you, there's nothing you need, want to do in life, you need help. I hear you. I don't care if I want 30 billion dollars, you need more than a trillion. And that trillion is not in heaven, it's without the human being. So I'm going to need those things. So we need to start learning that and, and all. So that's how we need to do it. So I just sit down, I write a list. That's how they taught me in church. What are you believing God for? Whatsoever things you desire, when you pray, believe you receive it and you shall have it. Father, I thank you. This is the budget for this is received. In Jesus' name, amen. And from there, I tell Josh, Josh, so we're going to pay for value. Josh, we're going to do this. Josh says, yes, 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 yes. Very amazing, man. He's helping. So, and when I'm, and when I'm telling him we're going to pay, I don't have the money in the account. <laughs> and all that. And then sometimes God just says, talk to this person, I share with the person. Oh, sure. You want to do that. Sometimes, listen to this. I tell somebody, and guess what? They don't do anything. I don't feel bad any longer. It's okay. We move. Are we together? Sometimes they're telling them it's three years' time. That I some people struggle with how you know that with God because that's how God is. God is not the of confusion. So I want to share, typically I don't share this dimension, you know, I'll probably share it in a closer meeting, but I'm sharing that with you because anything that God asks you to do, He has finished already. Just know that. Next time I go to 20 cities. Somebody came from Ireland. Please can you clap for him, Shay? He came from Ireland for this meeting. People are clapping as if they came from Chesterfield. We are going to Canada next year. I'm going to Australia next year. We're going to Canada next year. 20 cities. And I'm not going by that boss. Someone say, Amen. Amen. Don't worry. And as you start doing it, after a while, what happens is that there will be excess. And we're also now, the other part of this is that when people give you money, make sure the money is for what it is. Don't go and buy Gucci and Ferragamo. Are we together? Yes, and all that. Make sure that comes. In fact, we set up a partner's newsletter. Some days ago, for the first set of partners, create a proper structure around it. This is the reason why many people struggle. Take my point. I know that when people see transparency, and people say that they are giving, they are being blessed. What happens? They want to give more. And that's the way that we are all meant to grow together. So, follow up question. Yes, sir. How do you help the people that will partner, let's use that word, to see value when they're not going to get money back? Beautiful. So, I like that word value. So, the question what is value? I realized that number one is that people like to see real impact in people. Real impact. That matters a lot to them. I was talking to, to a very wealthy young man in Lagos um, last week, and he said to me that there's this guy online that every month he gets about one billion. 
that comes as accounts. This is Naira accounts. In Naira. <laughs> Not in it. What, what, no, this is one billion Naira. I mean, it's still quite a bit in terms of power. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, please, I don't mind. <laughs> and why? Because he posts what he does, the impact he does online. Are you hearing me? Listen to me. Let men see your good works. This is scripture. See your good works. Why do I post? Do you know someone who does tell me, Jimmy? Somebody sent me a message from Houston this morning. I've seen all your doing. Please send me an account number. I can send something to you. It's the same model. You have to let people see what you're doing, not to be seen for it. Are we together? But that is what that is going on. So let me see your good work. Okay, I'm going to stop you there. All right. Um, you know, if you want to hear more, <laughs> stay on to the panel session. Um, Good. We're going to proceed. Uh, he clearly has a lot to give up. And you can just sense that beyond what he would share normally in the group community, we're, we're favored today you know, to participate. So I just want to clap for Jimmy Taylor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, for those that are just joining us, you are welcome to the King's Rise of Kings in the Marketplace. He turns to someone to say, Rise of Kings in the Marketplace. He turns to someone else because they're not happy with the Marketplace. The Rise of Kings in the Marketplace. <laughs> God bless you. My name is Joshua Kamalafe. I am your anchor for today. And uh, we have a lot in store for you. If you came late, you missed out on great worship. But by God's grace, you can still have another time. And uh, we'll be hearing from the setback himself to share, to teach that light. Uh, analogy, I wrote it down, love, innovation, godly, healing, truth, and he added an S as an extra, salvation, light. We are lights in the kingdom. Amen. God bless you. So, moving on this afternoon, um, this morning, 15 minutes after, <laughs> um, I'm going to be walking, welcoming up the panel uh, to come and answer some questions for us to hear a bit more um, practical how we can apply these things to our lives, in work, in business, with family. Uh, but before that, I'm going to give us a quick five minute break. So you can go use the toilet, the toilet is behind you, there's water at the side. Talk to someone you've not spoken to, stretch your legs, get a better seat because you don't want to miss this anointing. Don't leave, there's more in store, God bless you. See you in five minutes. Please don't be late, God bless you. I don't know. I don't I don't Thank 
Do you fly? Or you won't. <laughs> <laughs> At least you can use light bulbs. That's fine. <laughs> God bless you. Amen. Um, so we're going to proceed today. Um, but I don't want to go in for a nourishing. We're here for a few hours. If you left your house today, our lovely Mrs. Neka, I know she's going to kick me out of this meeting. Please forgive me. I'm doing my work for now. She came all the way from Liverpool. Anyone from outside Manchester? Can I see hands outside Manchester? Oh, where are you from? Leamington Spa. Wow. Midlands. <laughs> How about you, Sister Kelly? Where are you from? Lagos, London. Yes. Lagos, she's shopping. <laughs> wow. Okay. So I come from Lagos, or London. London. Okay. But anyone else? Sister, where are you from? Ashley Kent. Oh. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, fantastic. Anyone else from Sheffield? Oh, you're not from us. Okay. Do you know Cracks? The top of my is from Sheffield, so I've just connected you to someone. <laughs> Are you mad? If you can talk after the service, God bless you. I'm just kidding, guys. Don't mind me, please. Bear with me. If you can talk to me after this, and I'll apologize. <laughs> Anyone else outside Manchester? Yes, sir. Paul. Why did you go to the city? Oh, <laughs> anyone else outside Manchester? Okay, oh, where are you from, sir? Bradford. Oh, is that part of Liverpool? Is Bradford? It's not really. Oh, it's just a hall. Do you know him, Daniel? Please, Daniel, he's from Hall. We should go speak to him. God bless you. Okay, we're going to proceed with the next part of the session today. Um, personally, I've already been blessed. I've received something. I don't know about you. Um, I want you to open your hearts as we invite our speakers this afternoon. So I'm going to introduce them one by one. Um, again, can I have, what is today? Uh, uh, oh, can I have four chairs, please, sir? Um, can we have normal chairs? Is that? Right. You want this? Ah, okay. I'll stay in the lights. Okay, come on. I'll stay in the lights. The hour, I'll stay in the lights. <laughs> God bless you. Uh, first up, we have. Who should I bring up? First? I want to bring up the Mr. Controversial. I want to let Pastor Jimmy tell me. Never mind. Okay, I'm going to read a brief bio. Uh, the bio is long, so I'll try and summarize it just to give us a sense of who we're going to be listening to. So, we have Mr. Dippo, who attained a PhD in strategic management from Rockford University. He has worked in banking and finance, the higher education sector, the tech industry, engineering, manufacturing. He's, he's done life. <laughs> Um, he's experienced leading high performing teams and creating winning strategies which help clients and companies achieve their strategic goals. Wow, this is a very long. In December 2019, he was unveiled as a top 20 LinkedIn voice in the UK for his personal brand, professional development, and expertise. In 2020, he was nominated for consideration as a. Let's just make welcome to the stage. <laughs> Um, with all the speakers, I'm going to get them to introduce themselves as a one liner so you'll hear from them again, don't worry. Uh, so that's Mr. Dippo. Next up, I think I'm going to bring up Mr. Sunday. Yeah, I'll bring him up next. Uh, next, we have Mr. Sunday at Derry Bay, who is a real estate expert, wealth and investment coach, and is the CEO of Entrepreneur Green. Networks limited trading as EV properties. Sunday is determined to help at least 1,000 people become billionaires before the end of this decade through wealth creation. Please sign on to sign up. <laughs> <laughs> he's an investor, consultant, and he's a strategist. He has invested and developed profitable and successful businesses. He has helped strategically consult, advise, and manage. Oh, this is interesting. Blue chips. Financial portfolios for investment banks from Barclay Wealth, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, HF. How you, so you switched into property? Wow. wow. He's a chartered member of Chartered Institutes of Securities and Investments. He's a Prince 2 and Scrum Master. So let's make welcome to the stage. This is Sunday. Everybody. Can we get another yellow chair, please? Uh, thank you. Uh, yes. I think. Hmm. You can sit on the edge. Uh, yes. What time are your sides? Yes. 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 Uh, 
Um, if we take this one, that's fine. We need the yellow one. Are you all okay? Don't worry. It's okay. It's fine. I'll sign. That's fine. It's okay. That's fine. Sorry. Okay. 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 Okay, last but not least, we have with us Miss Yeti Day. Why? Yeti Day is a data governance professional and a digital entrepreneur with a legal background spanning over a decade. Yeti Day combines her legal training across, sorry, with data governance to provide strategic advice and guidance to companies across diverse industries. Including some FTSE 50 wow listed companies. That's very high. <laughs> Yet today, recently graduated as an international student from the Sheffield Hallam University with an MBA degree. In fact, beyond her professional achievements, she is passionate about sharing knowledge and insights. She has an audience of over 46,000 community members strong. Let's make it up to the stage. <laughs> So, okay, I'm really excited. Don't worry, just do this. It's fine. Thank you. I'm excited today to quiz. To quiz our panelists. But before we start, I want you to just give us one line about yourself and uh, tell us something provocative that we don't, all of you, not just <laughs> um, you know, that we don't know. That you think we should know about Let's go. 30 seconds. Okay. Um, hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Dr. Dipo Awuchide. You can call me Dipo. I um, completed a BSc in accounting from the University of Abuja, subsequently, a master's degree um, at Coventry University. I'm curious to watch you guys from Abuja, so. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, um, I got a distinction in my master's degree. Um, then I proceeded to Loughborough University to do a PhD. Um, completed in 2015. Before then, I got a job as an assistant lecturer. Then I got, got a job as a lecturer. Then I was promoted as a senior lecturer, which I did for four years. Um, I mean, so I was due to become an associate lecturer or associate professor, um, but I decided to switch from academia into consulting. So now I work. Um, for a company in the UK, and the major client is um, is Ministry of Defence and some other critical national infrastructure projects. <laughs> okay, so um, off off social media and off the controversy on social media. I, I mean, I don't think I'm controversial. I think I get pushed to the wall and I push back. And when I push back, people don't like me because they think you know you're a professional. You're not going to say. Anything you're not gonna reply, and you can abuse and insult you. Um, but yeah, so I I work on critical national infrastructure projects. Um, unfortunately, because it's a security and defense related role, I won't be able to say more than that. It's a spy. Right? <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, sir. <laughs> Our next panelist, Mr. Sunday. <laughs> Bless you. It's only Chris Moore. We've done that back for you. So, <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much, everybody. My name is Sunday, as you guys have. I'm just sent here as an ambassador to help the public to make knowledge and multiply their wealth. So, over the years, as you can get on the CV, I've been working as a financial consultant with major investment funds here in the United Kingdom, the state, and in the company before I was calling this assignment. I call, I call it an assignment for me. So what I'm trying to do, I'm just using property as a footmark for people that you can become a billionaire in anything you are called to do. So if you are thinking that your passion is to become worthy, whatever you are called to do, you can be. That is what I'm doing right now. So I'm just uh, running a company called uh, in the properties, we've been making a lot of people to make money to get their wealth to invest in the property. So I'll talk more later on. So thank you very much. Well, um, I know this is Sunday personally, and I hope he doesn't mind if I share this. Uh, and kick me afterwards. Uh, 
Um, so at the height of his uh, financial career, he uh, I come to me <laughs> uh, he was making um, on some of his contracts seven hundred plus a day. So he really knows what he's doing, and um, he was employed by the organizations he worked with to deal with difficult problems. Uh, don't judge a book by his cover. Very clever man. See a problem and tell you this is what you need to change. And when last I spoke to him, he said, I'm now making more of these problems. I said, ah, <laughs> God bless you. And uh, last but not least, Mrs. Wyatt. Miss Wyatt, forgive me. Thank you. Mrs. Mrs. Thank you. Oh. Oh. Yes. Right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a privilege to be here. Thank you so much, JP. Uh, my name is Yuji Day, and I'm a data governance um, consultant. So I work with a tech firm. And I'm also a lawyer, so I have over 10 years experience uh, working in as an in-house lawyer and also you know, doing uh, commercial transactions before I moved here. Uh, before I moved, I've done a previous master's uh, at the University of Warwick. So um, it's an LLM actually, and uh, I graduated with distinction. And then we went back home, you know, worked with an asset management company and all of that. And then I decided one day to come here and be for my master's. So I was thinking it was a PhD, but I was like, you know what, I don't think I want to be that long. So I opted for an MBA degree and also because I wanted to transition into the tech space, which is what I'm doing right now. Uh, one thing about me is I'm really committed to making a difference in my community. So everything I have been doing, like for the past couple of years, it's just literally just, you know, um, making that difference. I'm a content creator. I'm always sharing um, tips, resources on not just only how to migrate. It's it's how to try because you can move here and you know just be there. So it's how to try and empower people. So that's all about me. I'm kidding. And last but not least, my name is Joshua Komalafe. Um, I um, I use the sentence to describe myself, which is in this season I help youth and young adults to number one, discover what they're good at, to operate from their best, and to find fulfillment. And I do this through leadership and development in the areas of leadership, public speaking, purpose, and branding. So those four areas are my key. So I want to go to you, Mr. Sunday. You said something that was um, really key, which I want to use to anchor the discussion today. Um, and I want to use that um, again based on what I know about now. Um, at your 40th birthday, remember that discussion. <laughs> He shared with me again, please. I'm turning around as he kicks me. <laughs> um, he said he went on crying despite the money he was making, and he said, I don't feel fulfilled. And his wife was like, What's wrong with you? And he just, you know, through a turn of events, said, I feel called into what he's doing now, you know, helping people to build wealth through property and business. So that issue of being called outside of the church is where I want to start. So, can you talk to us about how? That process, what that looked like for you, despite the money, that revelation, and I feel there's more for you to find the steps you took to to me. You are trying to make it to the motion. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so, so, so that people can be blessed. Anyway. So, as he said, uh, when you're ready to come to life, as you stay, you know, Everything is all about money. But you get to stage in your life, you find out that you get this money. Fortunately, on the journey, as you said, I'm able to go to the best university that then, and you know what, get the money. But there will be a money inside, inside to say that God will do more. So at my 40th birthday, when everybody was celebrating me, looking at my sources, and the clock was telling me the clock is going. You are here for an assignment, and if you, everything that is given to you is meant for you to use your assignment, why are you talking valuable? What is happening? I was so sad because I was looking to fall for my 40 years. So for suddenly, I went outside and asked, What do you want me to do? And he said, I'm going there, yeah, go. They told me to go to uh, this, uh, the vast Bible. 
Matthew 28, 19 to 20. Go in therefore and make the disciple of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. As, do you want me to be a pastor? Said, oh, no. So everybody is called to do something. So whatever you are called to do, you are going to be a pastor again. So, so why are you not talking about that? What I want you to do, now you make a little work. Now you are now going to be helping people to make words. I'm not yet so wet like that. I said, that is the calling. And I go home and I call my wife and said, I'm not going to do this again. The woman called Africa. Called everyone. Please come and help me to talk to this man. <laughs> so it seems they are remoting him to stop working. So I said, please, let me do this thing. I'm going to pay this. I'm going to pay that. I'm going to do this. And this woman was so furious with me. And I was even fall back and it's something tell me if you get to the job at the end of your assignment and you say because of somebody you did not do this then and then you find yourself in pain and I think this is the uh, the step of faith and today we are counting in the past. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I will ask back to uh, Mr. Nicole. And uh, again same question um, did you ever feel because uh, I don't know if every believer in one of this gets that feeling of one cold to one. Was it just a strong day in preference? Or do you have that aha? This is what I'm supposed to, you know, um, without going into details, of course. <laughs> yeah, so 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 for me it's um so um towards the end of my PhD in 2014, I started a company, founded a company called BTDT Up. BTDT basically stands for Pin Dead on that. Okay, okay. Yeah, so that was my first business. Um, in 2020, I also started I Impact Careers, um, which is a tech company. We train people who want to get into tech. We train, we deliver training sessions for companies, you know, in Nigeria and um, and of course in the UK on leadership, on culture, and a couple of other, you know, other, other you know, sectors. Um, while I was doing all of this, I held down a job as a lecturer in a university and subsequently a senior lecturer in a university. So I basically had a structure. I had, so I currently engage around 50 people um, in Nigeria, in the UK, in Poland, in Ghana, in Canada. You know, so these are the people who run the business. So basically, you know, mainly in Africa, I impact careers you know, in the UK and the rest of the world. Um, so my job as a consultant, my job as a senior consultant, operational improvements, um, you know, this current job I'm doing now, I'm doing this job because I want to get more experience in the UK and also make a lot of money because it pays, you know, quite, quite decently. I'm actually very happy to share all of the details of how much I earn, you know, from what business, from my job, you know, and, and how you can also get there as well. I mean, I'm not as rich as my who is <laughs> <laughs> into properties. Um, so that that job basically the calling, the calling. How did yeah. So so I'm, I mean, that's exactly what I was going to say next. So while I do this day job that pays my bills, that looks after my wife and my children. My calling, my purpose in life is actually to connect with young people, motivate and inspire young people, help them get better. And this is why I impact and BTDT actually runs. So we help people who want to get a better job, who want to get a better life. I mean, if you're a Christian and you cannot pay tithe and offering, you know, you can't sort out yourself was the you know was the evidence i mean if if i mean i don't know how to explain it clearly uh but yeah so you can actually do certain things to pay bills and live your life and but you need to know your calling and for me it wasn't like a ha -ha moment as such i've always been you know since i mean i'd say around 2008 2009 2010 it became clearer to me when i completed my master's degree and got a distinction i was like wow I'm so smart. I'm so. I led a class of about 75 people. I'm like, okay. And people were calling me, ah, Deepo, I want to come to the UK. Oh, Deepo, I want to get a job. So 
it became so clear to me without a doubt that this is why God has created me. This is why God has made me. It might not be what I do full time at the moment, but of course, you know that this adulting deals. <laughs> it has to be. I hope I answered that question. I think you've said more as well um, that even if you find yourself in a position where you're having to cover bills, there shouldn't be a loss of sight on yes. what is really important. You know, the focus should still remain to say, and, and someone said that even, I think healthcare workers are probably the most strained in the UK. Um, you're working 12 hours, 14 hours, but even then you still have 10 hours to 12 hours. So if you sleep for six, you still have six. If you sleep for six, you sleep for 14, you still have what's max four <laughs> to play with. And, you know, we shouldn't abuse that time that we have. You know, and no matter the position you find yourself, because some people that perhaps are just coming to the UK, you might not be on the same trajectory as some of the people that are talking now, but wherever you find yourself, make sure that you don't lose sight of where you're going, essentially. Uh, I think that's really important. Thank you, sir. God bless you. Okay, uh, YD, I'm going to move on to you and ask you a different question. Actually, what do you want to answer this one? Yeah, I was just going to say, like, contrary to every other person, like, it, I, I, the calling for me wasn't as easy like that. It wasn't like I found it or I knew it. I stumbled into my calling. So sometime in 2015, and I remember vividly because I still have that journal, you know, the Holy Spirit said to me then, like, you're going to tell your story. And at that time, to be honest, I didn't feel like I had anything to say. I understand it now because you have to go through a process. So I went to, through a lot of process for me to be able to get here and you know be able to say that. But at that time, you know, it was this scripture and uh, it was Matthew um, five fourteen, and uh, just going to paraphrase it's like here: you know, the light of the world is it is set on a hill cannot be hidden. You know, and at that time and until now, I, I still ponder on that. You know, and he helped me. You know, having that scripture, going through all of that. At that time, I started working with a charity called the Sickle Cell Aid Foundation. So my team and I were literally working with people to change the narrative of sickle cell disease in Africa because Nigeria has like the highest number of uh, people who have sickle cell disease and a lot of them die at age six. So I would say at that time, you know, I stumbled into my calling. I started working towards that, making a difference in my community. You know, And then when I decided to come here too, and I, I moved here, I would say I worked in a toxic environment and I lost my identity, you know. Sometimes we come in here and we just settle for less and it was, at that point, that was where I was, you know. And it took so many things for the Holy Spirit to remind me that you are the light of the world, you know. You are that city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. And there's this scripture in First Peter, it says you are a chosen generation, a real priesthood, a holy nation, you know. And I remember saying that at that time, you know, to myself, that this is how it is, you know. And... Again, I, I wouldn't say that it was easy because, to be honest, I don't like telling my story. So it was always really reminding me that, you know what, when you were coming here, you didn't have a lot of resources. Like, and I always say, I, I came here with two kids at 300 pounds, to be honest. But that's not, you know, I didn't even, you know, have the money to pay my school fees. And that's a story, another story entirely. You know, I came here with crazy fates. I used to listen to my talk just literally. I watched the whole crazy fate series to get myself up to come here and all of that stuff. So what I'm saying is sometimes like it's, it's not that easy or you know, if you're going through a process, it becomes clearer that way. And it's just realizing that you have the light of you. You have to share your story. You have to say the things that you've gone through. Even if you're not comfortable enough to want to say that, but your story sometimes is inspiring people. Sometimes I pushed, you know, I'll share it because I will struggle and always be to like share that. And when I share that, I have people sending me just to say, is I got told you to share that you know, this is just directed towards me, you know, and yeah, that's it for me. Sometimes your calling is not that clear, but when you have that, it's just reminding that you're the light of the world and you have to just tell your story because it's someone else's survivor uh, kids. Yeah. Thank you for Sometimes when we're sharing our moments, it doesn't mean that we're perfect or that every area of our lives, you know, they're covered. So whilst, you know, every level there's a new, I don't want to say it, <laughs> but, you know, um, it's good that we get this to encourage us as we proceed on in our journey. And um, I grew up in the UK, I think when I was eight years old. Um, so I went to a sixth form where 
it was so strange, even now, to think about that one of my friends that I was sending his rainbow brother. So he let his son drive to school for three weeks to be so the car. That's not what we hear. <laughs> I said, wow, this is a <laughs> So we want to get to that level where, you know, whilst we focus on what we're doing, as we listen to what everybody's saying, how can we put the kingdom first? And then again, for people around and family and you know what God is calling us to. So please listen in and tap on what it says. God bless you. Mr. Nico, I want to hear from you on what you think the challenges are when we talk about the bridge between how we're training church and for the marketplace. I heard you talking about training the church, so I said, okay, you used to church. So, yeah, what do you think um, needs to be done to strengthen that bridge? What are some of the challenges uh, from your viewpoint? Okay, so um, full disclosure, I'm not, um, I mean, I'm not like uh, you guys who are pastors and <laughs> evil pastors. <laughs> yeah, so um, I, think, I think the church, the church actually focuses a lot more on, you know, spirituality, you know, which is not, which is not bad, you know, um, a couple of societal issues, you know, which is also not bad, but I think there has to be, there has to be a, you know, a bridge between being holy, being spiritual, and being a person of value, you know, outside of the church. You know, I, I, for me, I think this is what a lot more churches actually have to emphasize. And, you know, I have a mentor, um, Shola Javi, who is, you know, a pastor in the Redeemed Church. Um, he's now in Nigeria and Canada, but he used to be, you know, in London. And what he used to do was, you know, either the first the, the you know the first one hour of the service in this church or the last hour you know after the service you know there's a petty bit one hour session for personal and professional development where people can actually come and talk about anything you want to set up a business you want to you know advance yourself in a particular career you want to get in, you know get better in a particular skill maybe even excel you know outlook you know, something as basic as that. So what, what I think, you know, the, the bridge or the balance that I would expect to see is a lot more focus on personal and professional development. And this kind of event is that bridge. Do we, does that make sense to everybody? You know, so it's not, I came in here, you know, worship, excellent. You know, uh, where's the young man from the University of Abuja? You know, very, very excellent. When I was working in, I was like, ah, Omar, what's, what's happening here? Am I coming to church? You know, I was like, I didn't get the memo. So this is the balance that we actually need. This is that, that you know, so your focus on spirituality and holiness and all of that, but how are you making impact? How are you being a person of value? So can, can, I, can I interrupt you there and ask, what if, because, you know, everybody has a point, what if the pastor is not equipped to speak that kind of value? Are you saying that the pastor should empower people like you to, to say, you know, can you hold a session? Is that what you're saying? Excellent. Yes. We all have our callings. Pastors, I mean, pastors, I mean, I know on, on Twitter, people like to say a lot of things about, about men of God. And when there's someone who has done something controversial, they blow it up. Pastors are not just pastors, they are therapists, they are marriage counselors. You call your pastor for one hour, he's talking to you, he's talking to your wife, he's trying to say to a lot of his area of competence might not be how do you invest in real estate so that you can retire at 45 or 50. You bring in my bros here and say, come and spend one hour, maybe a family interactive service or a youth interactive service, or a career day or something, you bring my bros, you bring HGD for a one hour session, you bring, you know, um, Jimmy Terry for a one hour, two hour session. We don't have to preach every day. If you have Jimmy on the mic for one hour, one hour, 45 minutes, that's, that, that's, that, that ministers to people, isn't it? You know, because it impacts their lives, they can actually go out there, you know, in the industry, wherever they are, they become better people. So it's not just about being holy, being spiritual, and there's nothing in your pocket. So 
I mean, uh, sorry, I don't want to make you feel like I'm preaching, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. So this, you know, you need people like this to connect, you know, with with the, um, you know, with, with church members. With so it's not just about spirituality and holiness. You also have to be, you know, someone who can bring value, someone who can be impactful outside of your local community or your family. That's really good. Um, we're streaming, so for those watching or that will watch later, please understand that we didn't say, this is very key, that we should throw away the holiness and the good virtues that we have from Scripture. He said in addition to that, that's right. Yes, yes. So please, don't chop off that bit. <laughs> and, and attack him again. So let's see. Like, Mr. Sade, can you tell us about how you feel um, you walk with God and what you from church prepared you for the step that you need to take. Thank you. So this is very um since I uh, discovered my purpose, I have more confidence to talk to God and the God listens to me. And I have boldness in the presence of God to shame God for everything using your obedience. So in this journey, I observed that once you identify your purpose, uh, once you identify your purpose, it's easier for you to connect to your God. So I will use an example in the face of challenges, because as I'm going to be going in the journey of your purpose, so it's going to be committing things to your hand, and when it's committing things, so challenges will be coming. So let me just give you one example. I think sometimes last year, when we had the event last year, I wanted to do one transaction. So I, I was so mad. I was so, you know, my car, I used my car, so I asked I asked, asked event here and there. But at the stage, I just come to myself and said, Oh, you are not the one that sent yourself. So then you give yourself a thing, then come back to your vehicle and send to this assignment. And I connected to God. And to God be the blood, the way it just happened was like really. So you now say lesson number one. In this journey, when you are growing, whenever you have anything that is not clear to me, come to me. So now go back to your answer. My spirituality moves to the next level. So my faith, my audacity moves to the next level. My staff is there. If I'm talking, they say, Where are you getting this phone from? I say, as and did I just said earlier, the provision will come. Yes. So it I now start building my business, uh, financial business. I'll be talking of juniors and all those stuff. So if you are caught, you understand your assignments, your level of spirituality will move to the next level. You're able to connect to God. And I used to tell people, it is not right. If I die today, I'm going to enter the of God. It's not because I'm perfect. But what I'm sent to do, I'm doing it. So if my coach now said that Mr. Sunday, which is God, what you have done, you've done the bit I've sent you to do. So I will enter. But because I'm scoring, I'm still scoring, they will see me. So thank you very much. Oh, man. He, he said something that I want to speak for us. He said, for each level, and I'm feeling this, you realize that as you go deeper with business or with work, to increase your spirituality. Yeah. That's essentially what he's saying. That there are certain levels that you need to, you know, your, your capacity needs to be stretched. You need to actually be able to receive those things. And I think that's so key because we don't actually hear that. We talk about personal development, the mental, the soul, but actually, I, I like the correlation that you, you brought to that, that as you grow in business or you're, you're becoming, you know, you're going from uh, analyst to vice president or whichever uh, position you're going to, that you need stretched spiritual capacity to handle what is coming. So I think that's a, a good uh, you know, inclination for us that as we are people of stretched spiritual capacity, when you then add to the soul bit, you find that you can operate at that level very easily. So I want to encourage us, uh, there are levels of faith, it seems we keep hearing this you know, word now, audacity as required, that can only come when there's capacity to handle what God wants to give to you. So please let's learn from that. God bless you. Thank you so much, sir. God bless you. Thank you.
Thank you. Um, and I would encourage anyone here that feels this is beyond my level. I'm just a student. I just came here to some something. <laughs> I want to encourage you to uh, take what you have now. You don't know how it will come in handy in the future. Um, don't despise everything that you're learning. At the right time, you'll remember this word and it will come out to you. So hold on to this. God bless you. Yes, Betty Day. Um, I want to ask you to give us a practical example of how you've had to uh, rely on your faith um, at work. And similar to what Rosalind just said about, look, I realized that I needed to increase my spirituality for this next level. Can you give us an example of something like that? For you? So um, I think it was when I started working with my current company. And uh, I was placed on a project, so I'm not going to go into the details, but it's a big utility provider, you know, and I was working on that project and uh, I was given a task. And part of my task is literally dealing with senior stakeholders, so it's not just only, and my, my role is like a lead management role, so I'm dealing with senior executives and all of that. And I remember when I got that task, I was like, what am I supposed to do in, in this space? And to be honest, my first instinct was just to carry my bag and run away. <laughs> I was thinking to myself, I was going away. But then I, you know, I remembered going into the bathroom and they were like, hey, calm down, you're a child of God. Uh, you got this. God has got you. God has brought you here, not to embarrass you. You know, he's brought you here for a purpose. So in discovering that purpose, like, you know, things will pop up and you just have to have it. So I remember just praying, like literally just praying and asking God. And what he said about capacity, because I realized that, you know, when there were some gaps I needed to fill. So I asked God for strength, like that. I mean, one with two kids, you know, I'm content creator, I'm jumping so much. I'm like, you know what, God, you need to help me, like, you know, give me that um, insight for me to be able to figure out what I, I need to do. And I would say that sometimes, like, you get clarity, like, sometimes I'm sleeping, maybe because I'm working on my project and I sleep. I would, in my dream, something would just come that I would just call I'm like, yeah, I had this dream about this thing. This is the way I'm going to go about this, or this is how I'm going to do that presentation and all of that. And I would say to you that also praying uh, works. Recently, we had a meeting, you know, and I had prayed ahead, you know, and before so we went for that meeting. How would you pray? So how you do you know that there are different kinds of prayer? So it's literally me. Sometimes when I'm in difficult situations, like I just go, I'm like, you know, God, you are my father. I am your daughter. I don't even have it. My dad is dead. And I always say, like, since my dad has gone and joined you, you know, with the angels, like, I don't have anyone else to rely on. So I go, like, down, like, down, 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 like, this is what exactly is happening. It's like a conversation. I am the mess. I need you to help me now, kind of thing. I need you to fix it. And it always comes true, like, comes true. The last meeting we had to do, and we had a meeting with senior stakeholders from different countries and all of that, the business delivery manager, you know, I had to do a presentation. She was like, oh, well done, because I prayed again, you know, when I was doing that presentation, I was so nervous. And, and then, you know, she mentioned my name in, in the presentation, like, oh, I need you to ask and all. I was like, that's not ordinary, it's God. I know that it's God that's working in that. So it's, you know, that's one way I deal with difficult situations. I go down my nails to just pray. And I remind God, I'm a child who brought me here for a reason. You know, I'm light. You just have to help me one way or another. And he always comes through every time. So we're going to go with you. Um, I'm going to ask the same question. Oh, okay. I'm going to ask the same question to Mr. Sunday. But before I go, I just want to say that the floor is open for questions. So if you have any questions for the panelists in relation to the theme today, I will take a few questions. Um, and when the time comes, put your hand up. Write the question now so you don't forget. Uh, and if you use your mind, you'll never leave your mind. Amen. Uh, so in your previous life, in what you were solving difficult problems, how do you engage the Holy Spirit when you reach barriers that you realize this is beyond my knowledge or what you told me? I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit. These are things that are beyond you know, what I've learned. How do you engage the Holy Spirit in your response? You know, the Holy Spirit is Those days, uh, even the present right now, um, those days, once I get to the wall of everything, I put it back. And I go back to my God. Most of us, when there is an issue, as you said it, so I used to do once, uh, once I have a year uh, encounter problem, there's some one logic that only goes up, usually gives to me, twist it on the other side. So as you said right now, you said what I said and you twisted it. So once you twist any issue, you are going to get it. So, but for you now to get that some result that is not going to make sense to you, 
So, like, let me give you this uh, level that we are like, at times you get to a stage where. Sorry, what's that? Sorry, it's, 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 it's okay. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. So, so that, that is a spirituality to wealth creation. If you have, have uh, anybody that has a lot of money, a lot of money, if you are close to them, they will tell you that they have something that they are buying that for. Either God with G, or God with big letter G, or God with small letter G. So they have that. So for me, I have the one with big G. So and I caught a logic when I was coming and I met uh, John Austin and uh, Nicole Josh uh, on a flight, one of my journey, and I asked this question, like, how did you get to this level? So most of once I set myself outside to go to a wilderness. So to go to a wilderness. That's literal words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you explain that? Like so I said myself that it's a lot of prayer centers in these cities. That I set myself aside to go and sit down there. Well, go and sit down there to talk to God most often. That God, and then from there, I call it the interpreting for me. So, and the reason why I'm saying this is because I want a lot of people to tap into the secret of becoming a champion in whatever you are praying. So, so you should try to find a way of understanding how you communicate to your God and how you can increase it. When I share this with someone, he told me that if he wants to talk to his God, he's supposed to tell it. He's not supposed to tell it. He's to sit down there. And they will be downloading everything to, to me. So, so, what I want to tell us is in our spirituality, you must understand how you communicate with your God and then increase the audacity, the, the level, so that you can get more. So, this journey, the, how efficiently you use the little is given to you, how efficiently you give you more. So, that's that. So, I think it's going to that's yeah, that's, I think that's really good. And just to give us context from scripture, when um, Daniel, you know, they said, Tell us the dream, I'm not going to tell you. He says, If we time, let me go and pray. And, you know, this is key here. The way it will look will be different for each person. You know, I personally can stay in my sitting room, I don't need to go. You know, some people do prayer walks, I get tired after 30 minutes. <laughs> you know, so this is key. And, and it's important we hear this. As if we're going to thrive as Christians, we need to know the secrets. You know, beyond the personal development, because if we're sat next to someone at work that's also done the same personal development, what stands us out to Christians? And I think this is so key. So, we go back to that. And moving on to Mr. Dickon, I want to change the question now and ask you um, that what do you think the rise of kings in the marketplace, what does that mean to you as we begin to learn about? Okay, rise of kings in the marketplace. Um, he says he's not a pastor, he holds the mic. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I think this is, um, yeah, so, so reflecting, when I was reflecting on this, um, you know, what I thought about was, you know, children of God actually being, you know, as she noted, that I think it was H.D. who said something about, you know, the, the, um, the light not being under the bushel and, you know, being, being a light to walk. So, Children of God in the marketplace, in any industry, wherever you find yourself, you definitely have to be the best person. You have, or you have to be one of the best. You cannot claim to be a child of God and be struggling. If if that makes sense, you can. You know, so so it's basically, you know, in the marketplace, you have to be different. You have to be distinguished. You have to be. You know, it, there has to be a higher level of of knowledge, of wisdom, of value that you actually bring to the table. And I think it's it's very very important. Um, you know, for people who go to church every day, for people who are spiritual, to actually have results. You know, because if the people who are worldly, the people who you know who don't call on God every day, if they have results, if they have something to show. And by the way, people say, oh no, the richest folks in the world, 
they are not religious, they are not. Okay, fine, you could say that, but again, you could actually say that the greatest, you know, blessing you can actually have is the salvation of your soul, isn't it? Um, so, if the people who are worldly, worldly have results, you know, the people who call on God every day in the marketplace, you have to be the kings and the queens, and the kings and the queens are at the higher level, isn't it? So your skills, your competencies, your knowledge, your wisdom, the value that you bring to the table, the solutions that you bring, either within a large organization or a small organization, or even within the industry, it has to be different. I hope I answered that question. It's personal, so if there's no right or yeah, I think we have to remind ourselves that there's a greater emphasis in this season. Uh, God wants to bring results. He's looking for Joseph's. And when we talk about kings, sons, Joseph's, it's not gender specific. Um, you know, the word of God is that you have time for Jesus. But he, um, the, the, the Lord sees us as sons inheriting whether you're male or female. That's another topic for another day. But uh, God wants to give us results in this season. Um, so when we talk about wealth, um, excellence, output, it might not have been an emphasis maybe in previous times, but God is laying emphasis on that now. He really is. And I think what um, uh, Dick was just mentioned is, is so key in this time that many people are like, well, so they said, now we to different gods, you know, and people are starting to get results. So God is like, I want to show you something more. And, and when you look at prophecy in scripture, uh, we're reminded that what God wants to do at the end time, as Jesus <laughs> said, the end times is reward. The end times is greater than what the church has ever experienced before. So God is really wanting to shower us with results in this scene. And I think we need to, I need to talk to someone and just say, God wants to give us results. Tell to someone, talk to yourself. God wants to give us results. Say, I am going to get results. I will be associated, associated with results. Let's say it again, I will be associated with results. One more time, I will be associated with results. I will be associated with good success. I will be associated with godly success. In this season, God is going to turn things around. I believe there's many people that will tap into this. And, uh, you know, ministry in whichever capacity is not free. God is looking for people that not only mentally will understand this, but even sourcefully will understand and partner with what God wants to do. Um, God bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Rosale, um, what is your perspective on the rise of kings in the marketplace? For me, it's just the, um, it's the call to action. So, uh, I understand this one, like, Whatever we are doing right now, we need to understand our purpose right now. The Bible says, let your light so shine for men so that they can give God the glory. So right now, I want us to understand that God is waiting, the market is God is waiting, and the marketplace is waiting for us to do exploits, to do greatness. This is not time for us not to compete. This is time for us to collaborate. Break mighty things, giant things, and make an impact within our lifetime. The opportunity that we have been waiting for has been open for us right now. If you remember in the Bible, there is a place that they said they want to build a uh, tower to the well, and there is a destruction because of the language. So right now, they're giving us the opportunity to come together right now to bring new generations. New careers, new innovations, new creativities, so that we can make the elevation of this decade. So, from my own understanding, I'm calling you right now. If, if you have not been working in line with your purpose, I want you to stand up right now and take the battle. The opportunity is right here for us. The marketplace is ready to take us so that we can make impact. So, that is it. Yep. Yeah, so I was going to say that, that what that phrase means for me is, is this part in the scripture, I can't remember where it's at, but it says something about taking the kingdom of this world. Mm -hmm. 
and making it the kingdom of our God. You know, and that's exactly what it is as Christians. Sometimes we, we shrink and we feel like because of the way religion is, we have to be the ones, you know, occupying the least position, but that's not what God has called us to be. You know, apart from being light, I go again to that scripture, that um, first Peter 2 9 says, You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a royal. When a royal moves into a place, you will know that that's a royal. They don't come in like, you know, being like that. So it's for us to understand that and just take our position. And again, I'll, I'll, you know, the, this week, the whole spirit gave me the scriptures, the prayer of uh, Jabez, when Jabez was praying and was asking God to bless him and enlarge his territory. And you know what the Holy Spirit said to me is, Jabez was praying that prayer for God to enlarge him and also for him to be able to see opportunities because as you become bigger, as you enlarge, you are doing that for the glory of God. People see you and you are shedding the light back to God. Like, you know what? He's the one. So as you are the light, you know, shining that light, you're shining it back to God, who is the one that has called you. So it's just for us to realize that, that you know, we're kings. And in being kings, again, it's not just only about prayer. Like, and again, I'm saying that because, you know, I, I remember watching this clip by Anora, I think it was Anora Media, and there was this guy who had been praying about wanting to work with a tech company. He had been praying for like several years. And they eventually called him, you know, and he didn't have a passport to travel. You know, and that's not preparing. So when we've been called, you know, we're called to be kings, but it's also preparing ourselves. Like, for instance, if you want to be, say, for instance, work as a director in a fintech or something, you need to start upskilling, you know, preparing yourself. So that's part of what it is. Not just only quoting the scripture, but upskilling ourselves, preparing ourselves to take that position as kings in the marketplace. That's it for me. As we round up this session, any questions from the audience in particular? Mr. Shea from Ireland, you came all this way and said to have a Can we get one of the uh, mics to him, please? Um, oh, you're surprised I picked you. Question for Mr. Shea. Okay, so you put me on the spot. Um, but you don't have to pick a seat up. Okay, well, it's, it's, it's okay. Um, so, this is a safe environment for us to have certain conversations around here. But we live in an environment where certain conversations like this can't be had in certain places. How do you now get to communicate effectively the purpose, what it is that you want to do without, um, you know, being against the law? You know, there's a difference between the law and the grace. So, there's the law, there's the law of the land. You need to look at observe those laws. Uh, okay, why, why I'm saying that is this, I'm someone that I'm very passionate about diversity and inclusion. I preach that wherever I go. But when I get to talk about diversity and inclusion, it's only based on people that are telling me about, okay, so what about the heat, the Adam and Steve's as well, and all of that. So it's difficult for me to talk about diversity and inclusion and having to, you know, I, talk, I just wanted uh, perspectives from other people as well. How can you um, get to marry those together. It's been I'm passionate about that return inclusion, but how do you get to talk about it and still not um, go overboard? Uh, I, I think I'm gonna ask you a question. One thing I've seen is when uh, there's something that I believe the Lord has shown me recently about Moses and how he journeyed to the mountain of God. And at the mountain of God, God begins to show him some special technologies for himself. So the staff, when he throws the staff on the floor, it becomes a snake. If he puts his hand in the bottom, it becomes white, as left as a snow. And if someone else puts their hand in their chest, nothing happens. If you throw the same staff, nothing happens. So I think to marry what um, Mr. Sunday said, there must be a journey to the mountain of God regarding this issue for you. And as you dwell with God, God will show you some technologies that will shock you. As you ever people say, I've not thought about this before. In fact, as someone tries it, it won't even work for them. But as we do it, you see what happened, you know, the Jezebel is looking for you, God takes you to a rock, you know, it, you're taking so before you know it, the wind's blowing, takes you somewhere else to move, you move on to, you know, there's someone I know, uh, one of the top four firms, uh, Gil Yu, uh, he's moved on now, um, he was put in charge of diversity and inclusion at one of the top four accounting firms, and they said it's Pride Week. What are we doing to celebrate it? <laughs> and he went to God and said, God, you know, I can't do this. Grab the wisdom. The wisdom God gave him was tell them that the marketing team will do a better job. 
Mm-hmm. Mark from the sun. So he said, the mark, he said, oh, that's true. And then we went to the over to the marketing team. So we didn't get fired. He didn't say, I'm a Christian, I'm fired. <laughs> You need technologies, and that comes from journey to the mountain. Yeah. And it will show you this is your stack. You know, this is your When you get there, just throw it on the floor. It's like, oh, wow. You've gone out the room before they say, oh, we didn't even talk about high school. <laughs> <laughs> so, does that make sense? Sir? Yeah. yeah. It requires a journey. And when you get there, you can stand with confidence. You know, by the grace of God, I, I work in the church with young adults, and I also do stuff business wise outside of the church. And I believe God has shown to me. In the church, you can say the truth as it is, but there are certain things you don't talk outside. So on social media, there's so many things, but I don't be ashamed of my story. Not because I know if you come to church, you say, ah, this guy is Melissa. It's true. But I know my place of operation. And if I step outside of there, you know, that's when you get into trouble. And some Christians are called as John the Baptist in the wilderness. They try to operate as Esther in the palace. Some believers are called as Daniels in the palace. They try to operate as Elijah. So if you don't know your place of your safety, you'll step outside and you'll be yeah. So I think as Christians, we need to understand that even as being called to the marketplace, there is a special place of safety that you will understand as we journey to the mountain of God. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Any other questions? <laughs> Sister Omar has a question all the way from, where did you go? Uh, from Kent. No, you said Ashford. That's it, Sarah. Ashford Kent. Can we get another mic, please, for a question as we wrap up this session? All right. Thank you. Um, I think for me, it's um, around. I'm passionate about women, so I run a, a training company uh, where I train people in business analysis and all other areas. So, but one of the things I've seen is in terms of um, women. We come from a place of, you know, we're married and all of those things, having kids, and then at the end of the day, we stay in our homes and um, not rise. And that's because we have a lot of things that we are doing, like our kids and um, running the home and all of that. And um, sometimes it comes from a place of, um, I want to do this thing. I don't know how to do it. I don't know where to do it. And because of that, it keep quiet and stay in that place and not rise. And that burden is on me to say, you know what? You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. You are not yet as equal as a man to rise to that place that God has destined you to be. How do we get those kind of women coming out, you know, to that place of purpose, to that place of, you know, um, getting to the place where God wants them to be? Because it's more of a burden. It's a passion. And people want to do what they want to do, but they don't have that opportunity. They don't know how to do it. Then how do we rally around them and bring them to that place of purpose and get, getting them to where God has called them to be? So the question you just the question you just asked, right? Yeah, it's on floor, it's on floor. Okay, the question you asked right now, I feel like this is God just pushing me because he's giving me an idea and I'm literally installing on this because I wanted collaboration and all that. So you just giving me that one. Yeah. But I, I was gonna say that uh, first and foremost, what you said is real, you know, I was in a meeting. On, uh, was it on Tuesday, very big meeting, and I was the only black woman there. And that's not the first time I'm a pause, and I'm, I don't see people that look like me, you know. And the only time I saw another black person was two other ladies who were cleaning and doing stuff. And it breaks my heart every time this happens because I'm thinking, you know, it, it, there's so much for us to do. But I'm just going to say one way we can do that is to encourage people. Uh, to create a forum, a platform for people uh, to learn actually, because sometimes people don't know. Childcare in this country is a lot of work. Like people ask me, how how do you do it? I've got two kids, age uh, six and five. You know, I still have to do meetings. I do pick up and drop off and all of that. So what I've got to do was what what I, I I told myself is I'm going to look for jobs that allow me to work from home. If I'm going to go to the office and have this really amazing you know culture. I go just once in a week, and sometimes it's fine if you can't, but I need only work from home, which allows me to do that. So sometimes people don't know that you can look for jobs that you can work hybrid or remote. Sometimes you can look for zero hours, like literally you know, flexible, but I don't know why. Some of this is why I share content uh, on my page. So it's giving people that information, educating them, and also providing the platform. Again, it's not easy for people to want to upskill what you said now, the PA classes about 700 pounds to 1,000 pounds. It takes a lot of faith for people to go out. So it's 
letting them know that you know what you have to invest in yourself. Whatever you do is an investment, you know, and, and this is what it is. And like you said, you know, it's us also that we are the black women you know, in that profession coming out to tell our story. When people see you, you know, you're shining out like, like, oh, I, I want to do that. I think I can do this way. And, and that's it for me. Um, I think I'll, I'll add to that and say uh, when you go on like Amazon to buy stuff, you can check the reviews to see what people are saying and um, make sure you get people talking that you felt. Post it. Let those women see those things. And it's like, oh, it's not so uh, sometimes when you're the only one, you know that thing about profit not being the worst, <laughs> you know, uh, when they see other people, it's like, this is a good product, I need to, you know, go after this. So, like, as they just said, make sure you share more content from people that have gone through stuff with you and have come out better. And that will encourage people around you. And the more the community grows, you'll see that more people are attached to that thing. Okay, as we finish this session, ah, you have to ask it, Liz. I should have put your hand up. You see this slide? It's about opportunity. No, no, sorry, that's it. Sorry, God bless you. I hope not. So, as we finish this final session, allow, allow. Okay, have you your room? God bless you. Have you your If not, I'm kidding. What's your name, ma'am? My name is Shia. She's not allowed. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to consolidate some of what my two sisters said. Um, as the only black and sometimes the only girl in engineering and AI is very difficult. And I think for me, part of the assignment is, okay, I'm here to bring other people in. I'm the gatekeeper here, yeah. and I'm going to bring other people in. And so what I do is, when I see opportunities, I send it to my people, mostly black folks. Hey, you need to apply here. Hey, they're taking this people. What do you need to do? And by the grace of God, I've been able to bring more people in because I am the gatekeeper. I own the story. <laughs> This is my job. This is what I need to do. I need to bring more people that, that look like me here, and that is my own domain. Thank you. 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 Thank um, let's go. Yeah, um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to repeat, you know, the things I say almost every day on social media, off social media. Be a person of value. Build capacity. Be a solution provider. Be a person of value. Build capacity and be a solution provider. Um, if you want to connect with me, my name is Dr. Dipo Awujide on LinkedIn. Don't so connect with me. Oh yeah, um, Dipo is D I P O, and the second name is A W O J I D E. Dipo Awojide on LinkedIn. Don't connect with me on the Madhouse, which is Twitter. <laughs> LinkedIn. I'm a different person on LinkedIn. Nobody fights you. Nobody calls you a fraud. Nobody is against your political views. LinkedIn. Is the best place to actually connect. If you reach out to me on LinkedIn, um, yeah, happy, happy to you know to interact. And I mean, if you're looking to get into engineering, if you're looking to, um, so the company I currently work for, they have a lot of opportunities. And I'm running a free session this evening at eight o'clock um, for a small tech community. So if you want to join, it's free. You can actually join at eight o'clock tonight. Uh, so uh, in case you missed the spelling, just go to the details page and look at the people we had recently, um, and you'll see these names. God bless you. Thank you, Mr. Sunday. Ten seconds. Let's go. So, so for me, I just want to welcome you to your new season of opportunity. So I want you now to go and start feeling your purpose, your grace. The floor is open for you. The opportunity you are waiting for, and I'm calling a lot of people to join us on this level to change the narration. So if you want to become, in terms of the monetary wise we are looking for, if you want to become 100,000 there, you will be there, you will be there, the door is open and you can come and join us on the journey to see you or on the other side when we are changing the world. So if you want to connect with me I'm on Instagram, Sunday I think you'll be, Sunday as in first day, Monday, Tuesday, Tuesday, and I think this half a day time will be 
India Bravo, India Golf Bravo. Thank you very much. Go on the interest page and you'll see it. You'll see it. Yes. Yeah, thank you so much again for this opportunity. I'm just going to say here that um, if God has given you a dream or a vision, please go ahead with it. Uh, don't, because sometimes it, it, it's okay to be afraid. You know, we're afraid, we want to stay in our comfort zone, we don't want to move out. So, if God has put that idea in your, in your mind, don't be afraid to jump out of your comfort zone because you realize that, you know, where He's taking you is, is bigger than where you think it is. That's fun. And also, um, don't hide your light on that, you know, bushel. You know, let your light shine. Don't be afraid to be kings, you know, in the marketplace because we always want to be in that small space and everything. It's okay not to be small. It's okay if your dream is really, really big, like, you know, do that and, and be it. And I'm also going to say, if you're a woman, if you want to transition into a non-coding uh, tech career, happy to have a chat with you. Uh, if you want to navigate chat here and all of that, just send me a DM. You can connect with me I'm, uh, majorly on my Instagram page. Um, it's uh, yjday at at E-H-Y-E-G, because I know my name can be mouthful, so it's the Y for Young thing, it's, it's tired. When I first came here, you see Y for Young, E for Young, <laughs> I was like, I have to learn that's Y for Young, you know, E for, and all of that stuff, so it's Y-E-J-A-T-E-W-A-K-U-N. I was speaking to a client one time, and they said, I have a rabbit, I'm like, you know, my colleagues were like, what, you know, yeah, so yeah, that's it for me, uh, thank you so much. God bless you, and uh, we're going to go on a short five minute break to get um, some stats at the side. But the uh, we also have a picture of this five minutes <laughs> uh, before we go. But everybody else, there's stats at the side. There's also parking available. If you speak to the people around the front reception, they can help you with your parking uh, to validate. Uh, All right, just a time check. We'll be out of air. Uh,
All right. Thank you, Lord. All right, can I just say a prayer? Father, I thank you. And I give you praise and glory for half hour God. And right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask that this teaching would bring lights to the hearts of people. But not just that, that it will empower them in the name of Jesus. I pray that where people are seated, they will see a bigger version of themselves. They will begin to see bigger things that you have ordained for them to do in the name of Jesus. But more importantly, they will get the spirit, the capacity to be able to execute on it in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, great. So a quick one. All right, so this is the conference. I've done Ghana. I was in Accra, Ghana on the 13th. We've done Ibadan. We've done Abuja. We've done Lagos. I see this every weekend. And there was one here in Dallas, but that one was, um, what's that? The Energy. No, okay, we'll talk about that later. All right, we're in Manchester or London. Next week, we're in London. Then I think it breaks. Someone said, Should we do rest? Yes, you can see there's a one more break here. Then we'll go to Chicago, two weeks break, Maryland. Then Houston on the 11th of November, and then 18th of November will be Atlanta, Georgia. There's an audience in the spirit, and it's not just me. People have said it around me, and God is saying something about things being very, very urgent. And that's the reason why. I'm doing this, and I will keep doing this as long as it asks us to do. But like I said earlier, the way we make it happen also is partnership, all right? So there are people that say, you know, Jimmy, uh, I want to be a part of this, and maybe monthly, quarterly, whatever, you can be a partner with us. I think there's a link, we'll share that a bit later. Um, I also want to talk about this. This is one of my mentors. How many people know this is Jumaka at all? So she's coming to London. Um, the reason why I put this also, apart from the fact that I believe in this, even though that I have to be in America and I've come for it, is that I believe that, you know, as a body of Christ, we need to collaborate. You know, the idea that I can only post what is in my own thing is, is not the way that we work in the kingdom of together. And um, it's a free event. I was in the, um, all Houston events um, earlier this year in March. And actually, in that meeting, God began to, you know, redirect me and, you know, brought me here today. So um, it's a very powerful, powerful meeting. I'm um, holding in London and it's on the 20th of October. So please go and get registered. Be please slash all London 2023. Get yourself for it. And um, you never know, I might just be there. You know, uh, it depends. Let me see. October 20th, I'm going to be there. That's the date for Maryland, USA. Okay, great. All right. So that's all London. Um, somebody asked me and said to me, so is all you're doing, all you're doing is it just speaking at events? And I said, no. All right, this is what I call more of an activation. So July 1, I put it out there and I said, I am a kingmaker. I'm not the kingmaker. No, that's not. There are many of us that God is arresting. Somebody said, oh, that they don't see that Steve Harris has also says, you know, talking about God is arresting everybody in the left and center. Trust me, all right? Uh, so he, he also has his own responsibility. But my own responsibility is to be able to walk with people. And I didn't realize that I, was, I used to do it unconsciously. Uh, but there's some people who say to me that, oh, that those days when I was running my company, they'll say, oh, go and work with PJ. Your career will move faster, you know, stuff like that, you know. I think I just used to take it for granted, you know. But there's something called the grace. It's an ability that God places on you for your assignment, not for yourself, you know. And God told me that I should start that first of all, I have to accept it um, because it was a critical part of this responsibility. And that my job now is to help people to rise into their kingship. All right? You guys are blessed because you have a king. We will have one back forever and from all right? I mean, that's you. So sometimes, you know, you don't have right image where that's concerned. You have, you have the picture image of reality. Are we together? And the truth about it is that the way, and I hope I don't get, you know, my visa canceled for what I want to say, but as King Charles is a king, you are a king also. The same way. You know, and the, drift, the difference is just the inner image you carry of yourself. If your inner image changes, everything about your life begins to change. That's true about it, all right? And my assignment is to resonate and talk about what God has done already. He has made us kings and priests, not he will. He has. So there's nobody in this room, if you're a believer, that is not. In fact, wait. When you got born again, you became a king. You spoke about the royal priesthood. That's what it is. I go together. So the same reason why I said, I wasn't born into it, then we born again into it. I together. So that's the whole idea, you know, behind it. And so if you, if you check this uh, and you feel you see a form, okay, so Jimmy, I would like to take this my kingship, you know.
know, to the next level. There are three things that I do. The first level is what we call the rock community. Rock is Rise of Kings community. In that community, um, if you, I, I'm not going to go through everything, but everything is listed there. The things you're going to do. And the reason why well, that's probably the broadest and most open community I have. Now, it's not free. And I believe that at a certain level, you have to pay a price to get value. Value is always valuable. Are we together? But it's just $10, $9.99 a month. So how much is that in pounds? Eight pounds. Or eight by four eight pounds. Two cups of coffee a month. Are we together? So is that a lot? Yeah, so at the minimum, and in that place, there, I think that three things I'm going to do, you get learning videos that are teaching our certain areas, the 12 properties of the king, are we together? Because listen to me, I mean, one thing that resonated a lot, a lot with me was the importance. Let's stop calling ourselves Christians. Let's demonstrate Christ. I don't want to go off us, but we are explaining too much. If you are powerful, we are powerful. You don't need to tell people I'm powerful, powerful girls. You no, don't, you don't need to. There will be, it will be evident. Are we together? You cannot be carrying God inside of you and look ordinary. Something is wrong there. Are we together? Okay. Uh, so in that, we have a, a regular meetings. I'm just checking everything is all there. So that's $9.99. And the next level is a good say, you know, Jimmy, I want to take this further. I know that for people that know that, for example, like it just says, I have something for women that I want to do. But you, you and I know that by Monday, we forget these things. I'm having together because we have to get to work again. And some people, it's only meetings like this. Some of you, yeah, remember what God told you in February, am I right? Yes. And... That's the problem. So you need accountability. So we have a structure where you will share your vision or what it is you want to do, and we have somebody in Ramada. They're going to assign somebody that is che checking, and then we find out, oh, there's something that is going to aid what you want to do. We'll send that information to you, because my own job is for you to enter what God wants to do fully. Now, that one is not $9.99. That one is um, $100 per month, all right? Because we're actually going to hire standards to structure the system then there's a whole lot for my going to do. That one is called the King's Guild, all right? And someone can say, you know, I can do it for six months. I can do it for one year. It's all up to you. The highest level, I'm not going to tell you the price. That one is with me. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. That one, you will see in your dream. I will, I will, I will. Uh, and it's not way out. I will take that, all right? But it's, it, it's a bit on the high side. But that one is you and I on your own journey. How do you like that structure, yeah? So you either do the nine ninety nine, you do the hundred dollars a month, or this other one. If I use, if you open your phone, you will see that that there's no price there. Now we have to apply. Actually, you need to know that I'm posted to you. So you are going to tell me that I'm interested. I'll have a conversation. And if I find out that I'm not the right person, I'm going to tell you why don't you think about this person? I'm not that selfish. I'm together. All right. So that's what I do on the back end of this. All right. So please count that you know get the form and then we're good to go. All right. I would like you to give today towards London's meeting. Somebody give for you to sit down your mind. Are we together? So I want to give a moment for you to give. All right? And that's part of how we do. You know, before I used to be a bit, you know, I, I don't want to talk about it. No, I talk about it. Are we together? Yeah, you know, listen to me. When you receive value, it's also great to reciprocate value. Are we together? In that regard. So if you're able to do and give as best as you can, please go ahead. The name that is there is somebody that we know very well. She created an account so that we're able to facilitate. You know, you who are always very proud of her multiple accounts. You know, we tell you not, are you British? I'm not British. Amen. I'm a human being. I went together, but it's all good. So, yes, we use that account, you know, facilitating stuff and all that. But everything that is there, we have our records. Every quarter, we're going to be sharing like a report in terms of international funds. So we know what it is that we're using the forums for. All right, great. So let's go to today's teaching real quick. The rise of kings in the marketplace. Now, let's we all know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Am I right? At the bottom, we have physiological needs. Am I right? What are those needs? Anybody? Food? What else? Shelter and all kind of things. It's not very interesting that you find all the people that are still at that level after ten years, twenty years, and that's what they're really trying, you know, to do. Yes, and then at the top. You have people that someone is working by some sort. You know, at the top, you have self actualization. You know, and that's kind of like the dream. When you are not thinking about what to eat, what to drink, when you're not thinking about where to travel to, to my point, where you now want to be yourself. And in as much as it is helped the world 
to understand how to navigate life, I don't think that that's the optimal way to go about because if you don't go through the whole pyramid, you might not arrive at the top. I mean, to get that, but I'm going somewhere. So, in, in my place of study and all that, I created what I call the hierarchy of black priority. And what I mean by that is that everybody in this room, you have you, you have something that drives your life. You have something that drives Now, some people are not conscious of what it is. And the more conscious you become, you can now decide to choose and say, am I being driven by the right thing? Are we together? All right. So at the lowest level, where most people are in life is that they're driven by survival. Survival. That is what is, look, let me just pay my bills. Let me just get something that, listen to me, you have to pay your bills. You live in the UK. I live in the US. I pay my rent every month. I mean, in Nigeria, I spend every two years. You don't want to plan that one, you wait for two years again. This one every month. It's like, and the month is like very fast. Am I right? Yeah, so I understand that. And if you're not careful, that can be your motivation for everything you're doing. And I'm telling you, it's not the way to live. It's not the way to live. You can't live your best life trying to survive. And that's what you said. You spoke about thriving. Listen to me. Should you survive? If you don't survive, you don't survive. Am I right? That's a good quote. Two table. I'm going to be deep on this. I must post it. If you cannot survive, you don't survive. So, but is there a way to live life that you will survive but live beyond survival? That's what I'm going to. The second, um, I mean, life priority, priority that I think that drives a lot of people, and it's very unfortunate, is competition. Competition. As long as my car is finer than Sunday's old, as long as my house is bigger, in fact, we see some trucks, they say, our truck is 10,000, the whole truck is 11,000. I'm, I'm, I mean, they even get into those spaces. And I think there's a student that says that they that compare themselves to themselves, they are not wise. In other words, if you are living, and you know, Instagram makes it worse. You do not even want to go to Maldives just because they are girlfriend went. I'm telling you, pressure all everywhere. I'm sorry, there's pressure everywhere. Are we together? There's pressure. And listen to me, how many of you have succumbed to pressure before? You, thank you for your honesty, yes. And listen to me, a lot of people, this is the worst part, they are unconscious that that's what's driving them. It's competition. And this is where I know, the moment they are better than their neighbors, then they just chill. The only thing that motivates them is when energy comes and tries something bigger, or she brings a new return back, and you say, ah, is it even original? No, you say our conversations should not be to that level. But what I'm talking about, there's a huge generation that is driven by competition. They just want to be liked. You post there something by two o'clock, by six o'clock, you have three likes, they are feeling down. Why? And this one person likes it. Even nobody likes it. Like it yourself. That's why I like it so down. You can like it yourself. But people are depressed today. Let me tell you, is this thing that's driving it? Competition. And people don't know. And I can tell you, it will try you to push. The third level is a great level. It's significant. When you want to become something, become someone. And listen to me, you can be broke of the dream of significance. I understand what I'm saying. You can be trying to pay your bill now, but what is driving you is not survival, it's significance. That's why I said that where you are doesn't matter, it's what is driving you. That will determine that if I, if, I, if I get on the skateboard right now and I want to go to London from here, I hope you know that I might not get there. I'm mean, together. What is driving me is the skateboard. I might not get there. But if I drive a Range Rover, 2023, I'm sure you know I'll get that bit there, right? That's fine. So, significance and at the height of Maslow's hierarchy of being is significance. And that's very powerful. But can I say this to you, dear child of God? Even that is not enough for us. So the question is, what is God's best for us? What was Jesus preaching? He didn't preach survival. He didn't preach competition. Can I even tell you something? He didn't even preach significance. What did he preach? It's called transcendence. And if you look on Google, I'll spray one that had transcendence. So what's that? Go so and check it. So I took that check and I understood what I was trying to say to me. Transcendence is living a life beyond this life. It's living at God level. It's living like God. 
Listen to me. When you live a life of transcendence, even after you die, you still be alive. <clears throat> when you live a life of transcendence, even when you resign, please somebody get me one that just put it here. Even when you resign for your company, they will still be referring to you after you have gone. When you live a life of transcendence, you will be living in Manchester for people that buy your products globally. But if you are driven by survival, all you will be doing is what can my hands do today? And the moment you get into that, you cannot do anything bigger than that. Can I say this to you that Jesus, and this was the problem Jesus had, he was preaching transcendence. Let me show you some things he said. Whoever will save his life shall lose it. Ah, what does that mean? And whoever will lose his life for my sake shall find it. You mean to find my life and must lose it? That's not normal conversation. Jesus answered to the young rich ruler, it's a big boy. This guy is a mighty star big boy. Am I right? And he came to Jesus one day and said, Dear teacher, how can I get eternal life? Just looked at him. He said, Well, I'm reading, you know, some of these basic, you know, revelations. I said, I've done all of that for my youth. Jesus loved me. Jesus now said, Look at him and said, Go sell your possessions. I can't imagine if God tells somebody to go and sell all the ass now. All the land, everything he has. He says, Go and sell your possession, and then don't just have things at the back, give it to the poor. That's transcendence. My question is how many of us are given to the poor? Don't some people are waiting to be big to give to the poor. You're not living transcendence too. Are you listening to me? Some people say to me, Oh, Jimmy, you know, you are making you, you make a lot of sacrifices. You are going to different places. Can I say this to you? A lot of what is going on, one of the biggest givers to this program. I mean, it's from Nigeria. He said in 2008, I came to NYC camp to come and speak. And I gave them my book free of charge. That guy gave millions to this program. What if I did not give the book? What if I did not write the book? Well, please, you can put it on the side so that that way it's not in the image. Thank you. So that's transcendence. Jesus said, look at the second Corinthians 5 and 15. And he died for all. At least all of you. He died for all of you. Why? That those who live, should no longer live for themselves. Are we living for ourselves? Should no longer. This is the life of a believer is not for you. It's transcendence. And that's what I'm trying to emphasize. I'm going to break it down as well, all right? But for him who died for them, I was raised again, all right? So, our conversation today is that of living life at the level of transcendence. True kings live at the level of transcendence. True kings. Let me explain. I see we come from a, a nation, most of us come from a nation in Africa, where our kings don't make transcendence. They don't live for others, they live for themselves. What does that mean? It means that the only time we remember them is when we read history books. That's the only time we remember them. But there are people today, like John Rockefeller, that even though he has died centuries ago, there are people that get, get his foundation donations regularly and they are referencing him even though he has gone. And people don't realize that you can be president of a country and have the biggest opportunity for transcendence or self-significance. A number of them want to become a billionaire, even though folks must not report him, right? Those are the issues that are there. But I'm going somewhere today. So true kings, I'm talking to you, live at the level of transcendence. Revelation 5 and 10 says, and has, I like the, sometimes I put the King James, all right? Has made masters us unto our God, kings and priests. So when I'm talking about kings, I'm not talking about who wants to make you to. I'm telling you who you are that you have forgotten. You are a king. Tell somebody there you, you are a king. Someone said I'm a queen. No, you're a king. It does not us queens and priests. Are we together? They are female kings. Are we together? You spoke about that earlier. Listen to me. In kingdom conversation, there's neither you know Greek, male or female. They say, ah, we want to do, uh, no, 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 we don't talk that way. Kings think hard, 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 hard. All right. So he has made us, look at what it says, and we shall what? Manage, survive. Ask your neighbor, are you ready? God's plan is for you to reign. In your field, for you to reign. My son likes soccer. And if I don't know, he to doubt it, but it's like the guy has some skills. Are we together? The guy, if he blows, he will reign. He's not going to play. He will reign, amen? Why are you laughing? Why play when you are not going to read? Didn't he say you will be the head and not the neck? I'm talking to you, sir. He said you will be the head. I'm talking to you, man. You'll be the head. These are the realities of what we got born again into. Can I say this to you? We did not get born again to go to heaven. 
I want you to follow. We did not get the essence of being born again is not to go to heaven. The, because the heaven we are going to, we are still coming back again. If you study eschatology, you understand in the end, we are coming back. The essence of being born again is to be born into his family to be like him. For as he is, so are we in this world. So when you are like him in Google, like him in Barclays, Barclays will know that there is a God here. That's the goal. And the goal is that you will deliver heaven where you are. They will deploy you to a department that is called hell and you will transform the place to heaven. I know, I know many people like this that to spice them, they transfer them to a department that nobody's looking at. When they go there, they transform the whole thing. Then they do here going out to take over the are, are we together? We carry grace. Are we together? That's what it means to be the light of the world. Not just be oh uh, when we get to the, listen to me. Nobody's cleanliness guarantees them. I hope you know that it's not how clean you are. Listen to me, heaven is a garden of kings. Our cleanliness is on his righteousness. No, yes. so. Yes. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to be global. <laughs> but some things are coming out. Just to tell them the point. Am I saying we should not be clean? Let me put it to you this way. Anyone who cleanses himself makes himself useful for the master's use. So the goal of cleanliness is to be useful. If you like, live your life anyhow, you will become useless. Not because of him, you are the one choosing it. Let me tell you, let me explain this to you. Where you are trying to take over is a dark place. And Satan only uses lies, schemes. So if you are falling to scheme at the lower level, God in his love cannot send you there. That's what, so who is doing you? It's you. Oh, well, there's grace. I can live anyhow. I can, I mean, yesterday that I was coming, I saw someone call, I was like, I'm one baby. You know, let me just enter this club. In Christ, I'm not going to come in my life. So I just see the building looking up like that. I said, Baba, let me club it. You go to your room. Let's get that. Yes. Yes. Ah, I have the same infirmities. Are we together? I get, I'm so, I have to meet people online so I can make it faster. Amen. Men you know what I'm talking about. Amen. Oh, you are too holy for me. I'm just telling you the truth. Not so that I'm not in a position that will make me affected not to be used. I'm not understanding this. So please, the concept of holiness, in fact, we'll see towards again, second Timothy 1 and 9 says, He has saved us and called us with a holy calling. Your calling is holy. You can't fulfill it without holiness. That's the truth. And listen to me, we are growing as you leverage your righteousness, you express your holiness more. You can't say, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, you are going to have a problem. I'm together. I'm leaving. Jesus, I feel like, but I lean on you. And I thank you because you're going to help me. You win the first one, you win the second one. You lead after a while, it becomes normal to you. That's not what we should be teaching people. Not telling them, don't do this. You are wearing scarf. I saw I still saw somebody say yesterday, people are wearing scarf. I was like, wow! This person you are far from God's kingdom. Scarf. Oh my god. Let's go on. So we're going to study. So I use scriptures to teach. Are we together? So you can go that but wait somewhere. So stay with me. This is Matthew 6, 31 to 33. You know, he said, Jesus said, don't worry, saying, what will we eat? You know who are dreaming about food, am I right? What will we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans don't, and what pagans that are outside of God or don't know God, they run after all these things, and your heavenly father knows that you need them. Sometimes I wonder whether he really knows. Because the way he's always doing it sometimes, but I, he knows. Amen. So say he knows. <laughs> he knows that you need them. How could have felt that before that? God, if I were you, I would be you know, bless you. Are we together? I've only been there before. All right, good. Verse 33. He said, but this is a secret success template. Jesus said, if you do this thing, this will start following you. Oh my God, I would like to be followed by good stuff. He said, prioritize his kingdom and then things will follow you. And, and you know that time people say, oh, that means that we should, you don't have to serve in church and you should serve in church. Listen to me, the church is the equipment center. Ephesians 4, 11 says that he has have appointed apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. Listen to me. Oh, I'm in part of independent body of Christ. I serve my father anywhere. You are not equipped, I'm telling you. Part of the equipment is that you must not know how to deal with wicked people in church. 
So I said, but church is full of wicked people. My hospital. Listen, you will learn people management. You will learn forgiveness. Amen. One pastor came to me one time. He said, I'm not pastoring the game. You know, these people are just using me. I said, ah, welcome. You just started. A pastor does not be used by a pastor yet. You will learn how not to be used. Are we together? I'm serious. Am I? God that knows about our imperfections. Why is he still Why is he not just remove people like that? In that mess, there's still a process for you to go through there to become. All right. So seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. So the question is, what is the kingdom of God? Don't let's, if I ask, if I did a survey, you'll be shocked that we all have different answers. And one thing I like about other religions that they have only one answer is Christianity that we have many answers. And when there are many languages, you can never be together. I hope you understand what I just said. That's been one of the challenges. Our doctrine is as people like it. If I ask someone, what's the kingdom of God? They say, the kingdom of God is church. If I ask someone, what's the kingdom of God? They say, the kingdom of God is heaven. We are going to the kingdom of God. But Jesus said, the kingdom of God is in you. This is true. So what exactly is the kingdom of God? In literal terms, it is the domain, the rule, and the reign of God. It is God that God's original intention was to extend the sovereign rule and kingdom across the earth. That was and is the plan. You know Genesis 1 in the beginning? You know the story. And in 2026, God says, we finish all of this project right now. We have done Scrum Master, we have done Sprints, Daily Sprints, am I right? Now we want to now go live. I'm saying that, but we cannot go live if there's nobody that's going to be the administrator. So let's appoint administrators like us, that look like us, and can function of like us. Let's bless them. Let them be fruitful, multiply, so build the earth and have the middle of it. And so God did that. And that was what, so the whole idea is like we are colonized as a nation by the British, am I right? Yes. So the idea is that we are away soon sometimes in Lagos heat because we are colonized. We are still colonized. Was, we are drinking hot in Lagos, am I right? Because of colonization. Yeah. All right. So that was the plan. I'm going somewhere. Did you notice something? Jesus spoke more about the kingdom of God than he spoke about salvation. Two of us. Think about it. I told you I'm going to shake something, but wait, sorry. Fear not. We are going to land in a good place. Okay, let me ask it this way. Did Jesus speak more about salvation or the kingdom of God? So I said kingdom of God. So, so, some can say I'm not sure. Anybody? Any I'm not sure? Okay, which side are you on now? <laughs> so I said, let me just keep quiet. Let, let me speak first. Go and study the scriptures. Jesus spoke more about what? The kingdom of God. Don't worry because I touched salvation. Well, salvation is the most important thing. So let me help you today. Without, let me put it this way, and I think I'm going to show a slide in that regard. Look at Genesis 1. Was there a need for salvation in Genesis 1? Answer me. What about Genesis 2? Was there a need for salvation? But in Genesis 3, was there a need for salvation? So, it means salvation was not the original plan. That salvation was needed so that the original plan can still go on. The original plan is dominion. But without salvation, you cannot do dominion. So when you make salvation the end, it's a means to an end. Because even Jesus said, except he will be born again, he cannot see the kingdom, dominion. Are you understanding this? So the essence, listen to me, and I know that it might challenge your philosophy, but the truth about it is that salvation is needed to activate dominion. Can I tell you what God is going to ask you when you get to heaven? Not salvation. Because you're already in heaven. He's going to ask you about the work he gave you to do. It's dominion. So we need to start changing the mindset people have. You must be saved. So now, I don't want to just help people to be saved, to make it to heaven. I'm saying the best version of you cannot be unleashed except you are saved. I'm saying I know the creator of life. That if it gets activated in you, you'll be shot with me. That's the whole, that sounds like a gospel. And that's the gospel of the kingdom of God. When Jesus died and rose, Acts 1 3 says he shot over 40 days. Now, you know those Chinese films when the master wants to die, just before he dies, he whispers something in the ears of you know that guy. And after he whispers, is the end, all the other enemies are destroyed. So the last words are the most powerful words. What was Jesus saying in the last words? The kingdom of God. It's in your Bible. Go and check out my Bible. Though. It's your Bible. 
And this is the problem. People think salvation is the end. Let me go help you. Go into the world and make converts. Is that what you said? What did you say you make? So who is a disciple? A convert that has matured. And that can do the work of kingdom. So while it's great that we celebrate salvation or conversion, that's the beginning of the work. You know what people do? Not everybody they lost matriculation, not graduation. <laughs> salvation is matriculation. Discipleship is graduation. Are you getting me? So we have many people in the university or church where we have soldiers that were recruited and then the boy has playing games. <laughs> Counting bullets. Imagine there's a war going on. The counting bullets. So I have one million bullets. I have three guns. I stop rifle. Or go outside. There is an outside key. But if you go outside without being equipped, you will not come back. Are you getting it now? I go somewhere. Look at what it says, Romans 8 and 19. The whole creation, all nature, waits expectantly and longs earnestly for God's sons to be made known. Wait for the revealing, the disclosing of their sonship. Listen to me. Sonship is not being a child. Let me, I think the next slide puts it. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given. You see, there are two things. You can be a child of God and not function as a son of God. And who is the one waiting for? Not children of God, though. Sons of God. That's the gap. So look at it. Look at it. it says, and the government shall be on the shoulder. Who shoulder? You can't put the government on children. They will mess the government up. That's what's going on in Africa. But it says, what is the nation whose king is a child? That's what's going on. I want to say something, but some people like this, you 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 you, you can't take it. She doesn't have many things I want to say to you, but I know you to bear it. Let me say this more. I made a post the other day. I said, I think that the political education of the Nigerian church is ongoing. Yeah? Christians are abusing me. That's how I know that they, they are children. They don't understand. I said, the man of the city is the man of the city. Pray for the man of the city. I even quoted scripture. Pray for those in authority. But they said, they don't tell us the prayer to pray. You can pray if you die. I said, yeah. I'm telling you, go and check my pages there. We have children wearing pampas. In church, I'm telling you, I've wanted to church for 20 years. Because when you understand kingdom, you will grow. There are conversations for children and there are conversations for sons. And so this God cannot tell you. This is to be one day I was, I mean, I'm in America, I live in America, and we are doing elections. So they have all their billboards, I'm going to come to center. I thought, what is the place? The reason said, Did you see what you just passed? I said, What's that? And I looked, I saw this vote for this, vote for this. He said, why did you see it? I said, it doesn't concern me. He said, yes, that's, that's the message. He said, many things are going on. These children, it doesn't concern them. Do you know what concerns children? Bless me. My husband, my wife, my promotion. I'm telling you, you need those things, but that's not the end of the game. Jesus said at the age of 12, don't you know I should be about my father's business? That's his all. Children receive the Father's love. There's a dimension of God that all you know is His love. I can tell you, God loves you. But that's not all. Sons love the Father's business. And do you know what God is doing? Many Christians don't know what God is doing. I'll tell you what God is doing. So, what is the Father's business? I've gone through this a bit. You know, in 1 Timothy 2 and 6 says, Who wants all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of the truth? So, salvation, am I right? Or this one. But I've gone through it, so don't let me take time. As you used to say, salvation of dominion. It is salvation for dominion. Please, if you know this thing, it will change your life forever. We are saved so that we can dominate. We, were, we fell from glory, but our salvation brought us back into it. And that glory is not for us to be shining among ourselves. It's for the assignment. The essence of salvation is what? For dominion. Please go back home and the burial Christian has told this to see whether it's true or whether Jupiter is a professional speaker. Amen? I'm not. Praise God. Don't worry. It looks like a lot, but I want to just point something out. One thing I always hear is that he has committed to us the ministry of reconciliation. The ministry of reconciliation. And when we hear that, what do we think about souls? Show us. 
Uh, I want to you see sorry, I'm going to share some things, but everything, if it's not in the word, I will not teach it. But I want you to see something. So flow with me. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in Christ in him and through him to do what? Be concerned to yourself what? Please take note of this. All what? Whether things on earth or things in heaven by making peace with his blood shed on the cross. So his blood was shed. One of the dimensions of why his blood was shed to do what? Reconcile to itself what? All things. He says, therefore, anyone, if anyone was in Christ, the new creation has come, the world has gone to his God. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself. So we see people here through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. So this is what we talk about the ministry of reconciliation. But when you think about it, we normally just equate it only to reconciling people. All right? But stay with me. We're correct, but let's go on. Right? Say that God was reconciling the world. Who was God reconciling? The world. We'll talk about that. To himself in Christ, not counting who sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors and no cause of making things through us. We employ you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So clearly, one of the assignments we have, and we should let people know that we are not just born again so that your life is easy, you can pay your rent. Those things told us those, those days, am I right? Uh, no, no, no. The whole idea is that there's part of, you see, many Christians are not involved in reconciliation any longer. That's the truth. They're not even conscious about that. But God wants us to reconcile. Who does want to reconcile? Look at this. Ephesians 4 10. He who descended is the very same as he also descended high above the heavens, that he is present. My feel what? Can you say it again? All things. That is the whole universe. So, what is in this whole universe? Look at it. Psalm 24, verse 1. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all its people belong to him. So the way I define this is that in this whole thing, there are three dimensions we find. You will find spaces, you will find systems, you will find souls. Just stay with me. Just write it down. Spaces, all right? God wants to reconcile spaces, the earth. Right now, there's climate change issues. God is not happy about that, trust me. That was in the original plan. Are we together? All right? Spaces, systems, and souls. I'm going somewhere now. And I'm saying to you, let me go ahead of myself and come back, that this reconciliation is not just for souls. It's for spaces and systems. When I'm through, you understand what I'm saying. So let's go on. So the reconciliation of spaces, systems, and souls. All right. The person who controls the spaces controls the systems and the souls. Let me explain to you. The person that controls media determines what is played or not. True or false? Today, you're always telling your children, don't watch this. Don't watch that. Don't watch this. Don't watch that. Am I right? True or false? You see, listen to me very soon. You have nothing to watch. Am I right? You know the reason why? You are only focused on souls, but you are not interested in the spaces and the systems. And the spaces and the systems influence the souls. That's, that's why even when people are giving their life to Christ, they can back collect it back. Am I right? I'm serious. Even we that are born again, many will say, man, we have to be conscious of our spaces. Am I right? Because if you mistakenly just search one finder one day like this, the algorithm will start donating to you. Amen. To us. Yeah, even women are going through a lot, amen. And I'm telling you, that is Satan. Now, what I say sounds very religious, but it is kingdom conversation. There are only two influences in the world: light and darkness. Because it's darkness that makes child pornography go viral. That's darkness. Please, I, I, I want you to understand. I, okay, let me this will help you. Spaces and systems are positioned to control and determine the thoughts, beliefs, and values of souls. At least, doctor, I'm trying to mean. Yes. There's, there's a thesis to this, some analogy to this. <laughs> Sorry. I we together. Listen to me. God does not just want the souls, He wants the spaces and the systems. Let me tell you what that means. It means we are going to have our TV stations or takeovers of TV stations, it means we are going to be in government. And when, they say go, go, when, the, when we get to government, you get to government not to go and hold fellowship. You go, go there to govern. It, listen to me. In America, where I live, my children, if, my, if, my, if, if you have younger children that are in elementary school, they cannot take Panadol, Tylenol, without them calling the parents. But those children can change their gender without calling their parents. And you know that I see Christians say, 
Oh no, Jesus comes soon. God is ashamed. That's his. I didn't say stupid, but I won't say that. It's a stupid statement. I did it intentionally. I know, I know, I know, I know that way. It's a stupid statement. You know why? Light saw darkness and is complaining. That's what's going on. You know about here? He will not touch me and my family. Defense. He won't touch us. Only with my eyes will I see. I'm beyond the reward of the wicked. <laughs> and God is ashamed. Don't be happy. It's a song there. That see what is wrong, I want to recognize it. And let me say this to you. We are seeing about grace not much more about. Look, I know what you said about conversations when they bring all those conversations. There's a wisdom that will no one will be able to gain say. I'm telling you, that is what the world is looking for today. They are confused though. They are in deep mess. They cry, but they come out wearing Gucci, looking good. I'm telling you today. And guys, they need us. Thoughts, beliefs, and values determine actions and outcomes. Oh, these Gen Z people, they're not okay. No, they are the product of the systems and spaces they're exposed to. In my own days, to go to the internet, you go to Cyber Cafe. Have you seen that? You have to. Oh, all right. Sometimes, the beef is ready and you forget. No internet, am I right? Children are born, they are browsing. So Satan knew that. So Satan positioned way back and got people that did not know God, even though they were, they were diligent and they had no values. And so they created systems and allowed anything to come there. That's what's going on. <clears throat> we have work to do. We are not born again waiting for another, for another. No. No. That's why that's my message. We have work to do. If your pastor doesn't like, I can have a conversation, I'll take a tea. We'll talk about it. And God to me said, until the kingdom becomes mainstream, you're wasting your time. God's original plan is to be, Adam was the one in charge, because he said, the boss of the sea. In other words, the boss of the air. In other words, he was saying, birds can fly in the air, they, they do wonders in the air. But I want you to do wonders with the air, that will even bought to marvel. That's technology. Technology has been there since, we only discovered it later. Everything is a discovery, am I right? Yes. So what we, we say dominate, listen to me. If God made Adam in today's day, he will not be saying dominate the fish of the sea. He'll be talking about dominating the football stadiums in London. And right in front of all of you, I won't mention the sect, but they went and they bought three of the top clubs. And they put their jersey with their inscription there. And they put the whatever there. Those guys know kingdom more than we. I'm telling you today, you are buying the spaces and systems. You are, you are subject to it. You you buy their jersey, what they write, you will be carrying it around. Are you getting me now? So we must communicate to souls, but must take charge of the systems. So when God says you be the head of the tail, it's not so that you you be creating life. You have no self esteem issues. It is positioning for dominion. Anybody teaching. And all your thinking is that you will rise, you will be great. I am not telling them there's a reason for your greatness. You are teaching half truth. That passing problem for people. I'm telling you. Look at Esther. Esther, small girl Esther, Jewish Esther. She was just there. I want to say, they bring beauty pageant. The king is looking for wife. Who can apply? She feel for. Or we move feel side. Grant for her. Something. True, 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 true. She became a queen. Oh my God. The first day when she got to her walk in. What okay? Walk in beauty. Chanel, Versace, Givenchy, Ferragamo, Gucci. A bush girl from nowhere. She now got absorbed into it. And then Emma was going to kill all the Jews. And was we were going to annihilate all of them. Monica heard about it. Was tearing his clothes. Was sad. They came and told. Esther, your uncle is at the ghetto. He's wearing sackcloth. He said, sackcloth, please give him three Prada. He won't be the devil wears Prada. Send Prada to him. He brought Prada. He said, this Prada is not Prada. Listen to me, we're in a generation that value Prada more than God. Are you hearing me? Value things more than the things of God. Don't be deceived. There's so many 
call the deceitfulness of Satan is real. And many Christians are getting to it. Even me, my real job right now, I'm like, God, whenever he comes, I'm good. Praise God. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to leave for that. Amen. And then he said to her, maybe you are here for such a time as this. Can I say this to you? You know why God wants to elevate you? So that his kingdom can come to you. Not for you to finally say, ah, after all these years of struggling, the Lord has done it. Can I tell you something? Your prayers will be answered faster. Just like, uh, what's that? Samuel's mother, Hannah. When you align your desire with God's desire, God wanted the prophet, wanted the son. The moment she said you give it to him, within one year she got it. Or many prayers are just God lift me. God is not a trampoline. Don't be throwing you anywhere. Listen to me. God can never lead you outside of his purpose. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. It's not a confused, confused God. I'm sorry if I'm saying something. <laughs> you, somebody could it. Revelation 12, 1 to 2. I want you to see how Satan works. One of the seven angels, how many of you have read Revelation this year? Amen. <laughs> well, please, you should read it. It's a good place. All right? One of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and said to me, Come, I'll show you the punishment of the great prostitute who sits by many waters. I underline that because that is called a distribution system. If you want to poison everybody in the place, find where the water system is, put one drop there, everybody will die. It's not more than that. So, what Satan does is that he positions in strategic places. Listen to me, the problem with Africa is that in the in the, in the um, hierarchy of um, Satan, you study demonology, demons are the lowest level. That's why he says, This child shall follow them and believe. It's called follow come. In my name, they will cast out demons. And now, if I kept going again today, you carry enough power to say to a demon, Leave. But there's no scripture that says you can cast out principalities and powers. How do you know that? It takes wisdom to deal at that level. The Africa is a, we are so excited about casting out demons. And sometimes you have to have cast out demons before. And if I ask of the task, they tell me how to marry somebody, I say, can you cast out demons? If you cannot cast out demons, he doesn't, he doesn't have it. I'm not joking, no. Don't look at me for me. <laughs> All right? I'm saying to you that demons are the lowest level. They're like area boys. Ah, alpha, and the bad civil. Just bring one gun out. He said, ah, about to add No, God is Jesus. When they see you standing in Jesus' name, the respect. I'm sorry, I'm teaching some strategic stuff here. It says by many others, with her, look at what has happened. The kings of the earth committed adultery. What's the effect? The inhabitants of the earth were intoxicated. Who caused the problem? The kings. And what's the effect? The people were intoxicated. So Satan does not deal with small boys. He deals with people in number 10, down the streets. Because if they give a wrong decree, the whole land will be affected. So if you are not planning for number 10, and you are called to politics, you are a joker. You are telling me things, ah, politics is dead, dead again. I don't want anyone to kill me. Eh? But you say you carry God now? Ah, no, not like that. You are a joker. <laughs> we have to let people know that there's no, what is jazz? It's music. <laughs> are you happy? Jazz is what? It's music. If you know who you are, nobody can stop you. Yeah. And we will not, not we'll be shouting in church, hey, I'm powerful. He talk more and do it in the office. Amen. We're almost through. This is the operating system of darkness that has given free reign for spreading. Can I tell you that? Is this it's a corrupted version of God's original intention? God's intention was to be the king of kings so that through them his kingdom can spread. You are a king. You become CEO, executive director, even supervisor. And in your department, Joseph was a king in prison. A king in Potiphar's house. So stop telling me, God, I'm tired of where I am. Where you are is not tired of you. Be a light there. Be a solution provider there. That's what it means. We have a mandate as kings to create new spaces, infiltrate old spaces, so some people, there's, there's a pastor, within pastor, Pastor Gandhi, they came to Shawu of Ogumosho. Am I right? Yeah. And there's more comment of, let me see how light, is there any fellowship between that and that? Like, oh my God. Some people are going to be sent to the traditional rulers places, I'm telling you. Instead of us to be praying for them, by telling them, ah, 
your head, you cannot be. And the reason I'm not saying that because they don't understand. Maybe he's mad. He actually can be mad. God bless you, sir. He might be mad, but I don't think he's mad. I think God is sending him there. Let me tell you, God is interested in traditional schools. And it's a wisdom that will make you be there and not have Satan. Then we will help you small. Neiman was healed. And when he was going, he told Elisha, he said to Elisha, he said, I'm going to put them out to say to you, your God is my God. But my role requires that when the king is bowing down, I have to bow down with him. Go and read your scriptures. So, but just let your God know that I'm not bowing down to this one. I'm bowing down to that one. It's in your Bible. So when you see some people in some places, God is sending them there. We are infiltrating darkness now. Don't go if he didn't send you. Amen. If you go, he didn't send you. Oh, why? Oh. Because God is sending one of my friends, Ruth, she was here. Fashion space. Today, nudity is the, is the whatever. Is the um, whatever for the day. The appeal for the day. The more you show it, the greater your followership. And it's actually self-esteem issues that's the problem. That's the deepest problem for many women. They are queens, but they want to be slave queens. Amen. I'm serious. Listen to me. What I want to say now, you say it, I'm sure it is. I'm not sure it is. Never say it. Praise God. No, I won't say, ah, oh, they are watching us on YouTube. Amen. And when they crack into the person, Leah said, I do it. He was going to carry with him. Amen. Praise God. <laughs> All right, let's go. So, we have a mandate as kings to create new species. If you dream, I'm just joking. All right. You can't listen to me. You can do anything you want to do, just fulfill your destiny. But that's it. You're the one that's run the ahead of you. So, if you are carrying with uh, Amen. Let me go to another one that's there. There's an extreme of fitness that's going on. Extreme. You know, we have to go to the same old everyday gym. Is that your life? Better wake up. Be fit for your assignments. I go to the gym now. I'm not yesterday night. I was hungry. Where is that? I'm kidding. I wanted to eat. The kind of thing I want to eat. I want to swallow something, man. Why don't you sleep, man? But if I swallow something, you will see it, man. I'm still fighting this battle. Praise God. I'm, we eat for strength. Some days for pleasure. But everything now is soft life. Just want a soft life. Please wake up. Oh. This destiny is not soft. There's soft life we need to. I'm telling you, it's in scriptures, but there's a hard part to soft life. Let's start teaching more truth. All this, I just want to go to Bali, go to Maldi. So they will do anything to go there. That's what Satan does. You want to drive the latest Bugatti, uh, Ferrari. You want to be like a lot of niggas. Oh, God, calm down. So a strong caveat, only those who acknowledge and operate in that kingship are the ones who will be able to rule and reign with Christ. This is a problem. If you don't acknowledge you're a king and begin to operate that way, even when you get it, you'll be afraid. I'm telling you. Revelations 5, 9 to 10. You are worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals for you are slain. This is salvation. Am I right? You are salvation. Look at that. You are slain and have redeemed of salvation to God by your blood. Now, out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation, and have made us kings, salvation to million. Has made us kings and priests to our God. And what happened? We shall reign. Tell your neighbor, I shall reign. The word reign doesn't need to be a big boy. It means to bring order where you have control. Are you hearing me? Because now, I shall reign. I'll be a king. That's what song that is your song. Amen. Uh, number one. He wanted number two. Please stop singing that song. We are all number one. Amen. You know, sometimes, but it's just a song. It's okay. You don't understand programming. And the transference of wrong beliefs. We are not trying to, it's a competition. I'm sorry, whoever said that song, I'm sure they had a good heart. But sometimes you just have, I use it as an example, so you can just understand that I want Bologi to be number one, the way I'm number one. I want David to be number one. I want Joe to be number one, the way I'm number one. We are all number one. The church has to not only accept his identity as redeemed, but accept his role as king. Can I tell you what? The darkest in the world, guess. Whose fault is it? Our fault. When there's darkness, who do you blame? Yes, it. Light. Who is light? <coughs> Send me back. <coughs> almost through. Ephesians 1.23, message translation. The church is not peripheral to the world. 
The world is peripheral to the church. What does that mean? Those of you have something called mouse. How many of you use mouse? That's why. Amen. When you plug your mouse to the laptop, the lap mouse will come alive. Am I right? If we remove the wire from the laptop, the mouse, so the mouse was peripheral to the laptop. The world is peripheral to the church. In other words, what is going on in the world is dependent on what's going on in the church. I'm telling you, the darkness in the world, climate change, is going to the church. You know the reason why? Somebody that did not study chemistry at the 99 elements, I did 99 elements there. I think I remember 99. I did that in school. Sorry, I forgot those things. Amen. Did not do research. You see, to me, it's an anomaly. When you're a child of God, read your Bible, but read about you. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> read about. Sorry, you know that books you used to read in those days. Lambert. Uh, Lambert is chemistry. Uh -huh. Listen to me. The Holy Spirit is not of an intelligent spirit. There's nothing you can place in front of him that I can't understand. It's not just for you to be seeing angels. Amen? <laughs> it's for you to see solutions. Praise God. Let me wrap this up because of time. Because Jesus is coming soon, by the way, alright? For us, the call to dominion is not a race for religious supremacy. I'm saying that Christianity is better than Islam. Um, it's better than Buddha. Listen to me. Stop having those baby conversations. Don't bother. I'm telling you, the person who will follow his best has results. I'm telling you today, is evidence. That's why it says, the Spirit of God will come upon you and you'll be proof producers. Deliver results. They will follow you. When Nebuchadnezzar saw how Joseph interpreted the dream, he began to prophesy. Your God is God. Nobody taught him. Let men see your good words. They glorify Father God. You have to wake up. Look at a prophecy that's going to okay, for us, the come to the is not a race for religious superiority. Forget about those things. I have friends that are, they say they're Muslim. It's okay, but I influence them. How are you doing? I don't do what they do. I we together. But I influence them. I share what I know in a way that they can receive it. Amen. Not every time that, let's pray, brother. They don't know how to pray like you. Hmm. But you must pray, brother. Tell them, pray, brother. Uh -huh, great. But they call to influence spaces, systems, and souls, and through this extend this invisible kingdom into the visible world. This is the assignment, all right? Look at Revelation 11 15. The seven angels sounded the trumpet. This is a prophecy. And there were loud voices in heaven which said, The kingdom of the world has become. So a day is going to come, this will happen. And when that happens, Jesus will come. Are you together? All right. But this is where I want to start wrapping up. So you just wrapped up a good speaker after seven times. <laughs> I'm just joking, all right? The strength of your kingship is directly proportional to the resonance of your priesthood. He made us kings and priests. Listen to me. If you don't pray, if you don't have a work with God, you cannot you cannot act on his behalf. If you are in I mind it, is it that the name of those secret people in you know, the MIT? And then they deploy you to MI6, sorry. No, no, don't, don't be angry, don't be angry. You know where we are, we have a different terminology. I apologize about that. But you people, this meeting that general police are from, I will say anything. <laughs> All right? MI6. How you the MI6 that they deployed to Zafara? I want to go to I don't need anybody again. I don't need any connection. You know the wire behind this here. I can see all things. Baba, you will see things. <laughs> this wire is your connection. Somebody's the, the, the eye up there says go left. You say, why go left? This place is clear. He say, I say go left. That's as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the souls of God. That's what it means. <laughs> Listen to me. You are led more to your assignment than sitting down on your seats. A car that is moving can talk faster than one that is stationary. Move. What is God asking you to do? Oh, uh, uh, in my church, they, they told me to speak about children. Take care of children. I'm telling you, what is the correlation between children and that great picture I told you? I don't know what he knows. Just do it. I'm telling you. Listen to me. You people, I will show you that the end. Many people, this one, and I'm going to say it with close my eyes. Many of you, not you, people watching online. <laughs> Many of you have abandoned what God asked you to do because you are too busy. I'm telling you. That's why I came to say. And God says, wake up. Wake up. He has saved us and called us. If you are saved, you are called. It's not only Pastor Joshua that is called. Not only Pastor Jimmy that is called. The concept of only apostle, prophet, and evangelist, they are called to equip those who are called to minister. We are called. And you know what I found out? When you know you are called, you start blaming yourself. You know the reason why people think they can live their life anyhow? 
they think, ah, we are caught. We are a free element. You are not a free element. You are saved and caught. When you are caught, it will, it will determine what you will post and what you will not post. When you are caught and you are conscious, it will determine where you go and where you don't go. Somebody asked me, said, you mean you have not been drunk before? I said, no. She said, wow, I need to get you drunk. I said, I'm all drunk in experience. You need to. that one is what you need. Someone asked me, have you not taken wheat to be high before? I said, oh, the problem, don't you? <laughs> and I'm not condemning anybody that has taken it. But I found out that those things would become an idol easily. I'm telling you, idol is not shikidi. <laughs> you know shikidi? <laughs> I want honor. Wear red clothes. All right. This can be a shikidi. <laughs> it is a shikidi. If it's so much you answer, you must feel like, ah, ah, okay. <laughs> Amen. Just it. I'm not. I'm saying to you that even if you are smoking three, reduced to one by the name of God, He said, if you through the Spirit modify the deeds of the flesh, that's how to teach people. Start walking towards that. And the reason why is because not because God is angry. If you like, He's smoking a lot of things, but you are the one that you are stopping what God wants to do through your life. You want to do hundred percent, you do ten percent, but you will still reward for ten percent. It's a good God. Are we together? So we are not accepting of that life. I told people that if you see me tomorrow, maybe that club, you know, I'm in Manchester. If you see me that club downstairs, I'll see me one fine girl. Ask me, brother Jimmy, is it evangelism? <laughs> I'm telling you, I give you permission. Watch me online. Is it evangelism? If I say yes, sit down with me. Let's do it together. Two are better than one. Amen. Help me. I'm telling you, I might be on my way. What to bear me wrong? Amen. Can you wear no more? Please, I'm, I'm, I'm serious, bro. And please give me permission if I see you doing anything on Instagram. To send and say this picture, this picture, this picture. You, you get me. Uh, and don't be angry and say, no, no, no. What, what, what do you mean? It's my body. I can do it. Uh, it's okay. I don't be praying for you. Uh, but you have to become a vessel fit for the master's use. It's not about this is a clean bowl, it's not celebrated for its cleanliness or its usefulness. But your usefulness is tied to your cleanliness. I want to have a meeting for men. Let me talk to you. Because it's like this attack. It's serious. People tell one lady said, This will always struggle. Who is always taking care of you? I said, The Holy Ghost. Amen. Yes, can you imagine? What do you think of me for? Praise God. We are going through things. Specific war for the United Kingdom. The Lord said to Moses, Go to Pharaoh and say to him, This is what God said to me this morning. This is what the Lord says. Let my people go. So that they might serve me or worship me. The system in this nation is very similar to the Egyptian system that traps people and makes slaves of them. Do you agree? Yes. And um, the outcome of that is not just the hard work that you have to do, it's that you will never be able to serve God like you can serve him. That's the effect. So God is raising priests, some people you don't know, always praying. Some people God is praying. See, because for them to change the physical, they must change the spirit first. Yes, yeah, so some people others are doing prayer meetings, prayer meetings. It's important though. Because Satan means to make out of it, don't be walking, don't be walking, then you just buy one house, then you pay money for 30 years. That's not the real dream. That might be a path for somebody, and they're totally wrong with it. Are you hearing me? But if God has given you bigger dreams and that, don't let that stop you. Are you hearing me? When we get to heaven, do you know what God ask us for? What did he give you to do? He's not going to ask about sin. Somebody said, when we get to heaven, we will show the video of our life. <laughs> Amen? I will never hey, Pastor Josh! Pastor Josh! He wiped away our sins. So they started to watch. They cut the tape. <laughs> Satan tried to fix it. He cut the tape. The man said, he bought the tape. Amen? There's no tape. Praise God. What is going to ask us is that there are people crying and I wanted to come and meet them. I couldn't go. And I said to you, did you go? I said, ah, I wanted to go. I will try that but Let me tell you why I do this meeting. No more but. Creation is waiting for us. And now we're not going to do church. We're going to go into the world. Service is for servicing. So we go and drive outside. We get to work. People are you see somebody and the spirit tells you, 
talk to this person. And the person, you discover the person is into suicide. And they tell them, I know anything about suicide. But first, let me love you first. And they try to resist it. And you just decide that they're for them, and take it on them, and the one they break down. And then that's how they have the victory. Don't let the first thing that comes out of your mouth is receive Jesus. They don't know him. Many people have said it on that dress. Say after me. <laughs> is it not true? Oh my God. I didn't watch one yesterday. The pastor, the pastor was saying, say after me. The pastor was saying, the pastor was laughing. <laughs> now, you should accept, but you must know what to accept. Only I'm going to be an American citizen, not to do a citizen. I'm not a president, so it doesn't do matter to me. I need the passport so I can travel over the world. You tell me, raise your right hand. I pledge to the allegiance of the United States. That's what it is to be born in me. From that moment, I become a new creature. When I get to the American immigration, they say, welcome home. Before they're telling me, yeah. <laughs> That's what it means to be born again. Welcome home. If we teach these people who want it more, you get my point. Right away, your feet. Where you are, you don't know what God is speaking to you about, what your own portion is. But let me tell you, I'm anointed for this. God says to me two things in, for you. Number one is alignment, a grace for alignment. The number two is a grace for attainment. That in this place, I'm telling you, I should begin to pray and talk to your father. Forget who is beside you. I don't care your age. I, all of you, you are going to pray. You might say, I don't even know how to pray. Father, my life is not my own. To you I belong. Show me the things you prepared for me and prepared me for. Help me to understand this life from your perspective. Help me to see things beyond what I'm seeing. Listen to me, there's so much to be seen that the eyes of my understanding might be enlightened and I might know the hope to which God has called me. Lord, in the name of Jesus, use me in my generation. Use me, use me. And I know that I have my issues, but I am available to you. I'm available to you. I'm available. Use me to touch lives. I'm telling you, all the world you want is in that life. All the joy and fulfillment you want is in that life of transcendence. There's a life of greatness that the Lord has for you. And as you respond and put the kingdom first, things will be added to you. Lord, I yield myself to you. That's the, that's the, that's the major prayer today. It's the major prayer today. And I'm telling you from today, there's going to be a strength and a zeal that will come from God that will, you, will, you will become a new person, having new desires, having new relationships, coming into new spaces in the name of Jesus. For people that have been stuck in the name of Jesus, you're going to find your way forward, find your way out of where you've been stuck for so long in the name of Jesus. For some people like, I've struggled with this for so long. Grace is going to come upon you in the name of Jesus. Come and pray somebody. Come and pray, come and pray, come and pray. I'm telling you, there's an exchange. There is something being made available right now for you to live a life of transcendence, a life of greatness available in God. I don't care where you are, there's greatness available by God for you. And in the name of Jesus from today, let today mark a new beginning for you. For you in your life, in the name of Jesus, let your eyes open. Oh, every fear eliminated, every fear from not be seen to of fear, but not a power of love and a sound mind. A sound mind that somebody here, you hear things in your mind, you know it's not right. In the name of Jesus, you are free from all oppression. In the name of Jesus, grace is coming upon you. Grace is coming upon you. Grace comes upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. Let that be your prayer. My life is not my own, to you I belong. I give myself, I give myself to you. I give myself away. Oh, I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Oh, I give.
give myself away so you can use me. So Heavenly Father, I thank you. I enjoy your heart to someone new. Thank you for the presence here. Thank you, Jesus. I surrender all to you. Everything, Lord, everything I give to you. I surrender, I surrender all to you. Everything, Lord, everything I give to you. Withholding nothing, holding nothing. Withholding nothing, I surrender, I surrender. Let that be your heart's prayer. To you, everything, Lord, everything. I give to you with holding nothing, with holding nothing. I give myself, I give myself away. I give myself away so you. Can you speak? I give myself away. Oh God, I give myself away. So you can use me. Father, thank you. I have my brothers and my sisters, and um, we've heard the word today. But our prayer. Because we can't do this on our own. We ask for your grace, your presence in the higher dimension. We pray for strength from you in the name of Jesus. I pray that for everybody here and everyone that might watch this later, that the next few days to weeks would lead to in, uh, an emergence of a new version of them. A praying version. But the Lord said that there are people here that have stopped praying. People that have stopped praying. And the reason why is because you saw prayer as a chore. You did not see prayer as your place to recharge, the place to become. They said, I didn't call you to religion. I called you to myself. And just sitting with me and turning off everything and just saying, I want to spend time with you. Just being a way is enough. Said in that place, there's so much I want to show you, so much I want to tell you about yourself and what I've created you to be. He said, in the middle of the busyness, find time for me. Find your quiet time in the noise world. Make out time, sacrifice. He said, as you begin to do this, he says that your steps will begin to get further ordered in the name of Jesus. So I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Every book on all times restored in the name of Jesus. And he said, people have stopped because they try to pray sometimes alone. He said, pray for one another. Call somebody and say, let's pray together. So people come together only for pleasure. They don't come together to pray. And they said that I have no problem with pleasure, but that's not the essence of living. You need me. For the things I'm sending you to do, I can only do it through you. You cannot do it by yourself. So you need me. That's why I said that without me, you can do nothing. And nothing, it's not that you cannot do anything. It's not that whatever you do without me is nothing. Whatever you do without me is nothing. It does not matter to me. So as you are getting restored, and I'm telling you, there's a restoration in the name of Jesus. And how does it happen? It's him that is at work in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. You start having a desire again. Respond to it. Take five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes. Take a stroll in the office. Just pray where you are. And, and open the scriptures. For much that only by bed alone, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. My word in you is life in you. Is life in you. Get my word in you. Be rich in my word. That is true riches, says the Spirit of God. Father, I thank you. Because you started something today for everybody. 
And in the name of Jesus, when I come back, oh my God, what you will have done through their lives and in their lives, it will be an amazement in the name of Jesus. I pray because when I was praying this morning, you said that people have financial challenges. I pray because you are the source of all good things. I pray that the well beside them, they cannot see that their eyes will open to it. In the name of Jesus. Because you said all they need is around them, but their eyes are open in the name of Jesus. Every financial constraint, you are loose from it in the name of Jesus. Now, what that means is that God is assuring opportunities. So, the speakers have spoken about them. Some of them, you will be led to one of them. You will find out that information, attend that session, and begin to act on it. And then from there, the way out will come from there. So says the Spirit of God. But you, the same one that has struggled, you are about to come into abundance in the name of Jesus. Because I should tell you, do not take time to take grace. I said, do not take time to take grace. In fact, for somebody here before this year ends, your story fully rewritten in the name of Jesus. The one that you should depend on others is someone that people begin to depend on in the name of Jesus. That's what I heard God say. And God says, I'm coming into families and I'm setting order into families and all that might mean different things for people but whatever it is lord let your will be done in families in the name of jesus thank you because our children are taught of the lord and created their peace even in the middle of this dark nation they will shine as light in the name of jesus they are preserved protected and raised as kings in the name of jesus i don't know why he's asking he says pray for single people and i pray my brothers and sisters that are single that you will not just marry, you will marry right. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. I said you will marry right. Amen. The Lord himself, as you turn to him, he will begin to show you things and will position you. Your own will come. It will not be with pressure in the name of Jesus. Amen. Marriage is important for destiny. There's no marriage in heaven. So that tells us about this side. Who you marry can determine how far you can obey God. So you will pick right, you will be picked pick right in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for other marriages, like God said, is infiltrating homes. So there's going to be order in your home. I don't know what that means, but there's order in your home. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We give you praise and glory. We speak over this atmosphere that from here light begins to shine. In the name of Jesus, we decree that there's an infiltration of secret places, of places of power in this land. In the name of Jesus, light is taken over by this darkness. In the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. As people are living after today's meeting, let them go back, not just in safety, but go into greatness in the name of Jesus. We thank you for our speakers who have volunteered their time, their energy, resources. Thank you because you yourself will replenish them in the name of Jesus. We thank you for the volunteers. They have served. I pray that in their own time, when you call them to things, people will rise up for them also in the name of Jesus. Father, for everyone that has given to this meeting in any way, in any size, I pray that in the name of Jesus, not only will you replenish them, but you will reward them in the name of Jesus. We give you thanks and praise, Father. We say be glorified in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Can you put your hands together and pray, Jesus? Pastor Josh, we are true and finished. I appreciate Pastor Josh. He's a really good man. Thank you, sir. Um, can we just pray for um, uh, Mr. Jimmy Terry, uh, Pastor Coach? <laughs> can we just um, pray for him um, from the bottom of our hearts? There are things that he's trusting God for. Uh, that God will go beyond those things. Um, that God will teach him the wells around him for his family to sustain them for generations to come. That God will take him into a deal that will grant him air miles. He will not struggle to fly anymore. That he'll enter into a new season where as he needs to get somewhere, he just taps into that, that deal of air miles. And he begins to get to places much quicker than he's done before. That God will connect him with people that have connections to aircrafts. And they'll begin to contact him and say, I can't give you the money, but I have extra fuel. Do you need to get to this place? That God will help him to get to those places quicker in the name of Jesus. I want us to pray that God will begin to establish air and powers in the different cities 
across the world beyond his imagination that will begin to reach out to him and say, tell us a year in advance, we want to start helping you to plan to set up a base in this place in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Father, we pray, oh God, that even beyond what he has planned for next year, open his eyes, oh God. Yeah. Let this become a full-time thing for him in the name of Jesus, that you will, in the next five to seven years, you will ignite him on, on a trail to wake believers up into this, this calling that you have given to him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And as we go today, I just want us to pray for ourselves finally and say, everything I've learned, I grant me the grace, God, to apply this in my life. And just pray for yourself and say, God, as we go, the grace to apply what I've learned today. I don't want to just come and, and be, be tantalized with information. And as soon as I walk out, I, I'm, I'm immersed with the realities of the life I've just come from, that this new understanding will transcend the reality I've come from today. That as we step out today, we step into this new life that we are being called into. The activations upon our lives, they will not diminish as we leave the building. That our stepping out of this building will be stepping into the new that God has for us. Arise, O King, into this marketplace. Arise, O King, into this sphere. Arise, O King, and begin to take charge of the systems. For we have been raised for such a time as this. Arise, O King, and begin to consult governments. Arise, O King, and begin to consult ministries. Arise, O King, this is your set time. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Can we display the uh, giving page on the screen again, please, if you don't mind? Uh, please take a picture. What I want to encourage every single one of us to do is send this page to someone and say, can you just give £10, £20? Just send it to someone. You've given already. You've committed. Uh, send it to someone that you know can give to, towards this. I say, just give £50, give £100. I want to encourage you. I was blessed. Give towards this. It's going to bless you. And on that note, I believe that is all. I will end with the story I started with at the beginning. There was a PhD student who intended to see a professor. He went to the professor trying to get the professor's time, get the professor's resources. And the professor said, do you realize that I used to be a PhD student? There are other PhD students around you. I want you to connect with them because one day they will become professors. So turn around, look around you. There are many PhD students who will one day become professors. You do not know <laughs> who's going to become what. Don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Make sure you connect because one day the, P, the professor will pay millions, as Jimmy Tilly said, for your session. God bless you. Until next time, stay connected. Arise, O King, into the marketplace. God bless you.